this is The Extra Sheet, the unofficial Age of Empires 4 podcast, hosted by me, Stockerton, along with Beal and Sir Nevels. How are you doing today, guys? Doing good. Doing good. Happy to be here. Another fine day, gentlemen. Fine day, indeed. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the more forgotten, unused, underrated, unloved technologies and upgrades. But before we do, let's take a look at uh, what Age of Empire 4 news there is to cover. Uh, first up on the list, I know that the biggest news probably in the RTS community is Company of Heroes 3 coming out. Uh, it's been pretty big in the RTS community. I know Fitzbro, for instance, has been uh, streaming a lot of that, as well as Snoop has been dabbling. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about the game from what you've seen? I, I, don't, I don't have it personally. I've only just watched some streamers. Personally, it feels like it's a different enough game. I don't think it's going to compete too hard with Age. What do you guys yeah. think? Yeah. Uh... I haven't picked it up either. Um, I have checked out some of the streams and I think, yeah, just historically, uh, Company of Heroes and Age of Empires occupied two different sections of uh, RTS players. Um, It's different enough that like Age of Empires is more similar to a Starcraft or a Warcraft kind of RTS and Company Heroes is really it's it's doing its own thing. It's way more of a, a tactics military positioning sort of thing rather than the whole uh economy into military like age of empires or or starcraft or warcraft yeah that's what i noticed too is a lot less a lot less macro focused a lot more micro focused so if you're into that kind of thing you might like that game personally i, I definitely lean towards more the medieval like kind of style of age but yeah, I love my base building. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well, like, yeah, just what Bill said. Uh, I, 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 well, like, I actually did purchase the game, but I've been going kind of hard in Asian Park 4 lately, so I haven't even started up. I, I, but I did play the uh, the play sets they had of the game when uh, before it actually launched. And from what I've played, I realized that it's a whole different, it, they're two different type of games. I mean, Whereas, like, Age of Empire, you know, you got landmarks and all that good stuff. It's really, like, that game kind of focuses a lot. And I could be honestly incorrect. It's just off the little I played. But it's, like, more so, like, there's no economy. Uh, You know, it's more of, like, map control. Like, you might hear if they ever play, like, Call of Duty. It's, like, domination. Like, you know, you got control points on the map, which gives you availability to more troops and bigger army. And it's just, like, it's not, it's, it's it, you know, they're both made, both teams are made by Relic, but... They're just, like I said, uh, way different, you know, like it's not really like civilization based, you know, you got axes and allied armies, you know, and the way it plays is way different, but it's uh, it's a quality game for sure. But just as far as the whole theme of the game, even though they are somehow that, you know, they are you know, right about the same development company night and day. I don't believe that company here is even going to really make a big impact on Age of Empires for it. Yeah, that's kind of my takeaway from it as well. Definitely seems like a very different game all across the board. I mean, they're both technically real-time strategy games, but yeah, I think I think you guys hit a lot of the thoughts that I had for seeing it. So, oh, cool. We'll leave that behind, I guess, and move back on to the game of discussion that we talk about here with Age. I do have one other piece of news before I'll hand it over to Sir Nevels for a Golden League recap. Uh, I did notice, I saw a Reddit post of this saying that Hera, uh, it was a clip of Hera who was asked by... He plays a lot of Age of Empires 2. He kind of dabbled in Age of 4 and then I think got disenfranchised and left, went back to AoE 2. And uh, someone asked him in his stream, like, oh, what do you think it would take for the game to be, like, viable again, essentially? And he was like, I don't even care. I don't think they, they, they've they abandoned that game, essentially. And I was kind of like, well, I don't know if I agree with that assessment. It sounds like he's just kind of bitter for his own reasons. But he said that not a big deal, really, in the long scheme of things. But some people might find that interesting, I guess. I think he's just better at AoE 2 than AoE 4 and just kind of likes yeah. the play. I think he likes the game cycle in AoE 2 better than AoE 4. And I don't think it'll, and anything could happen to ever change that personally. Well, if, it, if I had that some comment on that, like I, uh, so when I first got into of Age Empires 4, Hera was the first player that I actually watched. Like I thought Hera was like an uh, Age Empires 4 guy. Like he, I, I don't know, it's like, you know, up in the air why he actually left the game. Like, you know, whether it was like he wasn't winning anything or, you know, the game, because when the game he played is a much different game than what we're playing today. You know, it was a lot more cheese, you know, 
animation canceling and all that good stuff. And it's more micro centric at some, some points where like a lot of the Asian part two community, they're very heavy on micro like they're known for because, you know, you can do a lot of different things. But if you ask me, I mean, there's like this certain division between AO, AOE two and four. And it's kind of funny. It's like this like kind of tribalism thing where like, oh, you're either AOE two player or four. Like it's not really the same ego, but um, I kind of feel that everyone who from Age of Mar two has tried four has eventually just went back to two. Yeah. Like everybody, yeah, I've noticed. that. Yeah. I've noticed that pretty much because I followed Age of Empires two professional stuff since about like 2018, 2019. I watched T nineties videos back in the day, and so when Age four came out, I noticed. Oh, I recognize this player. I recognize this player. I recognize this player playing AOE four now and. Uh, it seems like that entire pool has basically just gone back to AOE 2. And we're left with StarCraft 2 pros uh, as the foundation for our pro scene. Um, but I, I mean, I disagree with Hera saying that developers have abandoned AOE 4. I think Relic can be a difficult company yeah. to work with. Uh, they've, they've certainly, I mean, they have updated Every time they make an update, it's great. Uh, I loved season two into season three. I love uh, what we're doing right now with the current season, season three into season four. I think every time they do update the game, it does get better. Even though there are so many little things that have been present since the start of the game, including just the fact that drop hacking exploit mm -hmm. that's still present and there's still problems with map generation, but it's it's two different developers with age two and age four and the people who are developing for age of empires two i believe uh it started as a community mod back in i don't know the late 2000s to like add a community patch to the game to keep that playable um in the in the modern era and then those people got hired by microsoft and published like the HD and DE editions and all the new expansions on on Steam. So where you've got AOE 2, it's like diehard fans turned into developers that are maintaining the game right now, where uh, Age of Empires 4, we're dealing with Relic, a company that puts out a lot of RTS, but has never had like one of the big name RTS games. So I think there's a difference in developer mentality yeah and i and i don't want to overstate uh and over take hera's words and blow them out of proportion i think even the, the reddit post didn't really get a lot of upvotes i just happened to see it and thought it was interesting and i i mean i think i wonder how much of that too is the competitive scene just having bigger cash pools still in aoe2 than it does in aoe4 there's not a lot of s tier tournaments for age of empires 4 compared to age of empires 2 so i wonder how much that plays into it but i would also say I mean, on face value, his comment, I still think isn't really, I agree with you, Bill, isn't really accurate because I think this game looks drastically different than it did this time last year. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty funny because if you uh, will go through, go to Harry's channel, it's like an older video. I don't know how, like back when he was playing the game and actually enjoying it, he made a video saying that what he would improve about the game. And like, it's hilarious because like everything he lists needs to be improved has been improved now. Like, it's like everything, like, you know, maybe like with the camera angle, they got panoramic camera angle now. He was like kind of nitpicking, but for the most part, and any things that are having, like things that are having problems, maybe like, you know, heavy siege meta and all that good stuff. I can't really go like off the top knowing exactly what he found a problem with the game. But I remember watching it just recently and like a lot of things that he was complaining about actually are fixed. So I'm be giving my opinion on things. You just want to play more what you win at. <laughs> like these <laughs> like Age of Age Empire uh two players aren't winning. And like the StarCraft boys came through and they just sweat. The like they just really like I mean anything like like like, like Viper, you know, like Viper, you know, he won the first S tier Age of Empire tournament by EGT TV and like you know, and that kind of like was like his last hurrah in Age of Empires four. I don't mean like Aramay won small stuff in the uh in the game. But in the Esther tournament, he didn't even, he barely qualified or he even got in. And then it's like a little conspiracy. Once they got rid of animation canceling, which is like what he loved to do, then he really was like, yeah, this game, oh, it's not for me anymore. Like, it was just like, hey, you just play 
it's like only well, I think it's only one Age of Empire two pro or like high like you know that like a high tier player that still plays the game. And he goes by the name is Caspa. Like other than him, they kind of all gave it a dabble and kind of tucked tail and kind of went back to what they know more. And uh, also too the uh, you know the casters around the game kind of like you know like they gave it a shot. Uh, one that came to my mind that kind of he has a big following Age of Pirates too, and he kind of put the blockade up for four. Was a member. He, uh, you know, he's a big caster, Spanish caster. He has a nice following, and he kind of like off rip was like, "This game is not for me." Like, you know, and that's fair. You know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you really want to play more of what you win it. Mm. I think you mentioned yeah. kind of a good point there too, a little bit about like the animation canceling. I think again, this game is so much more, especially with this uh, between the two Age Empires games. Even I would say that Age Four is definitely very macro heavy as opposed to micro heavy. I mean, there reaches a point in late game. I mean, if you're a good enough macro player and your opponent doesn't have the macro to keep up the economy, you don't even have to, you just a move, just a move once the whole military, boom, you win. Like, I think at that point, you only have to really micromanage like your siege and sprinkles a little bit towards the end of the game. Otherwise you can just let your economy out and overwhelm your opponent. Thank you for telling me that because I have a huge problem with my game. I will try to micro an hour into the game and lose every fight I play. Thank you. I mean, if you have the micro, <laughs> by all means, use it, right? But like, like I think it reaches that point where a good macro is going to be a, a good micro any day. All day trumps it. My, I'm always trying to get it. Like, win every battle I take, and I, I got 30, 40 idle villagers. Thank you. I got to get that together. <laughs> don't, don't we all? <laughs> well, that, that's it for my news, I think. Uh, Sir Nevels, I think you were going to give us a recap of the Golden League, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden League, it's like, it's, you know, uh, there it is the sole really S-tier tournament right now in the community. And it's actually pretty good. Just to give a quick, quick recap of the community as a whole, because, you know, I was first time bringing it up. It's just, uh, so you know, it's an S-tier tournament, which is, like, you know, the highest, you know, you know category of tournaments in the community it uh has three as a qualifier of course and has three different rounds before the playoffs and the first round which is already passed but the first round is it was something called uh no stone age and basically it's just really just like you know it's a 64 player tournament and in the first round they just they just couldn't build stone walls heaps or stone towers that was the whole gimmick of the first round which wrapped up a pro player that i don't know if people are familiar with uh but goes by the name of lucifron he's a spanish pro player him and his brother which is pretty cool it's a lot of brothers in the pro scenes it's pretty dope but him and his brother battled out and uh lucifron he ended up taking round one of uh, the uh, known stone age but the one that just actually wrapped up today actually a couple hours ago on sunday uh they call it the fast start frenzy the gimmick behind the, well, I don't know if it's called a gimmick, but like the rule set behind this round was uh, it's called fast start because instead of spawning with six villagers, like we all know, we so you're spawning with 12. So you're spawning with double the villager count. So you got guys going up to the feudal age in like one minute and like 15 seconds. Like it's supposed to be like, a you know, it's called fast start frenzy. It's supposed to be a faster start. And that just wrapped. And that was it was actually really exciting. I think it actually had some talking community about making it to where the developers patched in more villagers to start. Maybe like, maybe instead of six, maybe nine or even 12, which is actually like something that happened in StarCraft. StarCraft, I think when the game first came out, you start off with like three little worker drones and they end up moving it up to, I don't know, 12. I don't want to play StarCraft, but like nine or 12. But anyway, the rap uh, capped that off. You know, a lot of pro players went crazy, but uh, in the end, um, the, play, the pro player that uh, people, well, spoiler, spoiler for anyone who doesn't, uh, you know, may watch them on time. But in the end, the player that came out, took the W, uh, it came down to the player Marine Lord. He's like, you know, he is like one of those like high, kind of like almost like a little uh, a- AOE force celebrity. but he's one of like, you know, the he won the, la- the latest biggest tournament, Red Bull, Wall of Law. So he's very high. Highly told it in the community, and he also faced one of the Spanish professional vortex. And yep, he took the cake. He uh, it was, he actually went crazy. He went crazy. He did his thing. But the one coming up, and these uh, these are for the next two weekends. Like actually, I think it's for the next four weekends coming up. But the third round is starting next weekend, and the theme of the third round is off meta combat. 
So basically, uh, all the pro players, uh, pool of 64 players, I believe, they play in any civilization that is popular for that map is banned. The first, the first four most winning civilizations are banned for the map. Oh, I so saw this. Example, I saw this. I yeah, think English yeah. was banned for like the entire dude, round. Is, <laughs> dude, if, you, if you play English, it's a wrap. If you main English, yeah, and you will like. And if anybody who is a big fan of English, I apologize. You will, you will not see your civilization at all because English is just that good and they're that well rounded. Like they are popular in every map. So basically, for example, uh, Baltic, which is like the if uh, the new season is called Baltic, previous season is called Mediterranean, which is a primarily water map. The civilizations that are banned are Rus, HRE, China, and English. Because mm, no those are the most, yeah, exactly. Those are the four most popular civilizations on water maps. So all the ones that are available, you know, like, you know, players really got to practice heavy in these because, like, what they're used to playing, they're, uh, yeah, they are 100% not in the map pool. Or not in the uh, player pool, but it's funny because there's three civilizations that are allowed on every single map, and I'm kind of thinking like, do these civilizations just lose all the time? Like I'm like thinking like, like why are these civilizations available on every map? And these three civs are the Abbasids, French, and Malians. They're available on every map. I'm not which surprised means by have, French. I'm not surprised yeah. by the French. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Abbasid, you, you were French. Abbasid, yeah. Abbasid, Dude. though, Dude. Neville, you were speaking that one up our last episode, Dude. saying all hail the Abbasid like <laughs> dynasty, and now Dude. they don't seem to be favored whatsoever. You know, you know I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this. It's kind of hurt my feelings. No, like the Abbasid, the, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the deal is. I can't even, like, you know, put my finger on it, but like the Abbasid, if you're going to AOE 4 world, they have the, I think they have the lowest. At least one of them, they, they have a lower uh, win rate than the French. Like the French are like, honestly, if I, I gotta like find it, if I go just gonna pull it up, but like the French are like not even, they're like kind of like right underneath, you know, maybe like 50%. Like French have a losing rate, but like not as bad as like the Malians or Abbasid. It's crazy. I thought that the Abbasid, with all the tech changes and the different ways to play, I'm, I thought they'd be, you know, kind of back on top again. But yeah, so basically, wrap it up. Uh, going to this, it's a it's a it's a seventy thousand dollar tournament. It's pretty cool because it gives like a little different player base. I'm mean, like different, like gives different players maybe that you don't really see too much in like the top. Gives them opportunity like you know stretch their legs out, try new strategies out. And it's cool for the viewing experience too because when you watch it, you know you see something you don't really see. If you say, for example, if you play ladder, or you watch pro players play the ladder. You know, what I'm saying like with the uh, fast start frenzy with the twelve villagers. It uh, you know, it made the games faster and it's a little more entertaining to watch. And now with these off meta content, uh, you will see uh my fault, excuse me, off meta combat, you will see players on maps you never see them on. Like you'll see you know what I'm saying you'll see French and like Delhi on like you know, Baltic, like you never see that. You'll see like, you know, Roos on like Pit, you know, and Delhi on Pit. And like that's just something you don't really see too much on the ladder, in my experience at least. And it's cool. And after that, of course, you know, you get the playoffs so long. The last four players, and there's no gimmick to that, no type of special rules. The four players in the playoffs play, and the one on top. And I think the, the total price was seven thousand, but I think the top play is like seventeen grand because uh, the owner of the Discord, on my phone, he's not Discord owner of the uh, the run of the tournament. He pays out everybody in the tournament, like from the very bottom, they get like a hundred bucks. Like so, it's pretty cool how he does it. But anyway, so everyone in the end makes a little bit. But yeah, that's uh, that's going too. It's going to be pretty sweet every weekend. I think the next four weekends coming up. Nice. Well, thanks for that, Sir Nepples. So oh, gotcha. looking for that. That'll be on ECG TV for anyone who's wondering. I'm pretty sure most anyone who, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably already know about that though. So <laughs> hopefully you're already aware of that. That's a tournament going on. I, I've been following. <laughs> I've watched a couple of those games. It's been some fun things. I did see, and we're going to talk about this later after our break and our game show we're doing here in a minute. I did see some Grand Theft Venison from 3DB against, oh, yeah. uh, I think it was Marine Lord, actually. Did see some mm-hmm. uh, Grand Theft Venison from the Malians. I will be talking about that later today. <laughs> but first, yeah. before we get to that point, we do have a game show I've prepared for you guys. So, right. step right yeah. up. Come on down and you're going to spin that wheel. <laughs> Jokes, there's no wheel. Uh, however, I do have a list of 20 <laughs> questions. Oh man! And we're gonna we're gonna say that each point is worth a sheep. Trying to keep the theme of the podcast here. Okay. Whoever ends up with the most uh, sheep at the end, obviously, would have the most food and therefore win the entire game, as always happens in age, right? 
That's how it works. Okay. This is how I'm I going two scouts. I'm going two, two scouts. scouts. All right, all right. All right. Should, should, I, should I close on LE4 World? Should I get it down? One yeah. Down? yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, LE4 World, World is banned. You may not pull yeah. it up on your screen. I should, I should have said nothing. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, got, I've got 20 Alexa. questions. Exactly. <laughs> Alexa, how much does wheelbarrow <laughs> cost? <laughs> oh, if we're going off that, oh, I'm losing. Uh, yeah, oh, I expect over. I expect you guys to lose a lot. Um, I I'm, <laughs> I might have to start doing multiple choice if you guys do really bad. The questions get more difficult. However, okay. here's how it's gonna work. Oh, I'm we're gonna alternate players. So I think we'll start with mm -hmm. B. We'll take question number one, and it'll go certain okay. levels. Question number two. If one of you gets a question wrong, the other has one shot to try and steal it for a sheep. So oh, all right, he with the most right. sheep at the end wins. And now, now if you get the question right, you'll hear this. And if you get it wrong, I, I really debated which voice line to use for this. Uh, I decided to pick the most dramatic villager death sound I could find. And I think Abbasid has it. So here it is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what you'll hear if you get it wrong. What? 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 Abbasid Bill's dying. What? <laughs> What do they got like that? Here, 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 here it is again. Ah! I expect we'll hear it a lot. Whoa. <laughs> There's a couple of voice lines. That one was the like, most have... dramatic, I think. I, I think Delhi might have yeah, some dramatic crazy. ones, but it was. I, I've always noticed in my games against Abbas that they have some most dramatic villager deaths. So yeah, the there game we go. I play as Abbas. Yeah. That's crazy. The way my villagers get raided with Abbas, I should know that. Like, what? I didn't even realize they died that violently. Okay. Yep. It's pretty great. It's, I, I usually only notice that when you like kill one from very, like, it's a single villager walking and then you kill them. They just kind of, they, they like flop on their knees and die. Like, you, you know. <laughs> All right. We'll start with Beal. Question that we got, right. I got 20 questions. So it's 10 each, essentially. Question number one is how much does Wheelbarrow cost? Uh, wheelbarrow is uh, 50 f wood, 150 gold. All right, that is a sheep for Beal. Wow, starting off strong. Way to Dang. go, way to go. Yeah, he had that one ready to go. Oh, man. <laughs> Who do you think you are? I almost <laughs> said food instead of wood. I <laughs> said food. Yep, yep, it is 50 wood, 150 gold. All right, I question. 125. All right. Yep, oh, question no. two is going to go now to Sir Neville's. We are now 1 and 0. <laughs> Sir Neville's, how much is Double broad axe. This is the feudal age upgrade for wood. They got cheap with the update. Uh, I'm going for it, dude. I'm, well, I'm pull, I pulled these off. I pulled these off of AOE for World, so they are as of this week should be up to date. So <clears throat> I'm glad. Twenty-five, you 25 gold, seventy-five wood. <laughs> <laughs> It is 50 food, 100 wood. Can I say it? Oh, wait, that I shouldn't question? have said it. I should have said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sh I shouldn't have said it. I, sh I just no, said it. No. I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got that one. Okay, okay. I, I, sh oh, I, I gotta make sure you can no steal gold? it next time. That's on me. There's no gold? Uh, not oh, the double yeah. broad axe. It's 100 food, 50 what? food, 100 no wood. Wait, wait, let me double check. Let me double wait. check now. Now no, I'm starting to question. Double broad axe, I'm pretty sure, is a food gold tech. It should be. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Yeah, it is. It's five, fifty food, fifty food, one hundred gold. So same numbers. Oh, it's wrong, way more expensive. Wrong than I thought. Way more expensive than I thought. Yeah. That's uh, hundred gold. That's why. That's why. This is why. This is why I have to get my upgrades. This is why. Okay. All right. And now we go to Beal. Question number three. We you have one sheep to Sir Neville's zero sheep. Your scout's doing a good job so far. Question is: How long does textiles take to finish its research? Yeah. How many games do I actually research? You know, I'm actually going to bring that yeah. up in after the break. That's actually one of the technologies I wanted to talk about later today, too. But how long yeah. does it take? Uh, let's see, by the time, if I'm getting textiles, we're going late in a game. Uh, and it's something I'm picking up because I've got multiple TCs and some exposed vills. Uh, going to throw out 20 seconds. Oh. On top of it, it takes as long as it takes for a villager to be produced. So, Dude, what do you think you are? So you're losing <laughs> one villager in the space of time it takes to get textiles. So that I, I used to think it was never worth it until you had two TCs. I still think it's probably worth waiting for two TCs, but we'll talk about that later. It's not as long as I, I thought it'd be 40 seconds. So I was kind of surprised about that. Okay, really quick. So maybe my mind says different. I thought it'd be more worth it with just one TC because you can't replenish something as easier. I don't know. Maybe we can, we can, we can discuss. We can discuss. Yeah, that, yeah, there is yeah, definitely okay, some. Yeah. Okay, that is yeah, our topic today. So save that for later. Okay. All right. Uh, 
I am. I feel like Sir Neville's. You're getting some of the harder ones. They do get harder for for me as well. But uh, but this is also a tech I want to talk about. Um, and you might not know this one. I would not know this one off the top of my head. How much oh, is professional scouts? Dude, we haven't. I haven't used professional scouts since I was like freaking. Oh man, a young lad. Oh, okay, professional scouts. So that's obviously got some gold involved. I know it's a little. They make it cheaper. If you oh, get within my 50 Lord. resources, I'll actually give it to you because it's pretty tough. This is a tough one. You've had two tough ones. You don't, in a row. you don't got, you don't got, you listen, man. You know, you, I appreciate it, man. You know, if I take an L, I'll take an L. You got, you okay, bring right. you can, Keep you me can honest. I like it. You can get that like good yell at me. All right, I'm going I'm to I'm keep it moving. Okay. So I'm going to go with, buy right, some gold. I'm now, keeping in mind, it's a food, it's a food upgrade. So keep that. Okay, that's your one tip. Okay, yeah. Okay, my one tip. So, okay. So we need food, but I know it's probably some gold involved. So I won't use food because it's for food. That that was yeah. Yeah, for okay. So okay. Wait a minute, no, no. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't memorize any of the tech upgrades. So I'm, I'm I guess I gotta go. F- I'm so off. Everybody's back. I think I'm slow. Okay, one twenty five gold. You said food upgrade. So like, let's say two seventy five food. Uh, it'd be be wood, not food, because it's for. Oh food. no, wood. Okay, well then, so so what I say? One twenty two. Two, like 125 gold, I think is what you said. Yeah, and I say what, 275? So 275 wood. <laughs> oh, you're, my you're, Lord. It's, it's, you're, yeah. you're to- the total amount of resources is actually close, uh, oh, but but not there. Right. Beal, do you want to try and steal this right. one, Beal? So I, I got I to gotta come clean. I've got the podcast outline Google Doc up. Oh, no. And you've written you the cost of that I, It's because we're it's talking about this one. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, All right. How much I'll, is it then, Bill? You won't, 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 yeah. All right. It, it is 75 wood and 275 gold. Now, I think the, oh, I think the wood yeah, amount yeah. is fair. The gold amount is really expensive. And I'm going to yeah, talk about the merits of this that's, later. That's Bill, I appreciate you keeping it honorable. You yes, got me out of there. All right, Bill, you have, I think, Bill, you're at two sheep. Is that right? Yep. Two sheep. And now, Sir Neville, there's plenty of game left, and this one's a tough one right. for Beal. So, Beal. I did send the map. Beal, what does extended lines do? This is the fishing upgrade, of course. The first extended fishing, lines? Yeah, this is the first fishing upgrade. What does it do? Uh, it... I don't think it increases capacity on the ship. I think it just increases... I think it increases fishing ship movement speed and gather rate. Do I need to give you a percentage? Uh, if you want, I'm going to... You're already wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if Sir Neville's going to give me at least what the basics does without even the numbers, I'll count it, because fishing is, is an interesting one. Can you take a guess, Sir Neville's? Yeah, it was... Uh, what was it? Say more time. Uh, or extended what? lines. This is the first fishing upgrade for your fishing ships. It just extends the gather rate of fish by like what, like ten percent or something? Mm-hmm. That's my final answer. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> extended, <laughs> extended lines increases the gathering rate of fishing ships by twenty percent and increases the carrying capacity by ten. Oh, so pretty good. Oh, okay. so, yeah. Wait, so are we saying too much? Should we just left it like? Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, why did I say ten percent? You said I, I need percent. I'm over selling myself. You should have just said it helps your fishing ships. <laughs> I mean, that, that, I guess. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I, I didn't think it increased capacity, but I yeah, guess... Uh, it's a good text. It's one of those texts that I... Yeah, don't... Typically, like, I'll take it, and but I'm not seeing, like, the 44 coming back into the docks. I don't know. Yeah, and I, that's, I, I, that's another one. These, these are very topical questions. Cause I was going to talk about fishing upgrades, too, and, like, water upgrades in general, because I don't pay a lot of attention to those Dude. i usually i usually get extended lines when i'm on a dock because i know it does yeah, help increase i get that and one it's, for it's sure. worth them i think it is worth the money anyways question six goes to sir neville's here uh, we're still oh, two yeah. sheep to zero sheep this one's a okay. bit easier it's how much do the mining and farming upgrades increase gathering rate by we're looking for a percentage yeah. So, like so, new, uh, so are they the same yeah they're the same it's like, like okay. fertilization and like double uh Double Broadax both do the same increase in gathering rate. Like 15%? The 15%? Hey, there's a sheep for you, Sir yeah. Neville. Let it go. 15%. There we go. Man. I'm scouting a little better. Let's get it. And fun fact, I think that's each uh, age it does it too. Because in the Feudal Age, it's 15%. In Castle, it's an additional 15%. Yeah. And I think in the Imperial Age, it's a, an additional 15%. I think that was the only increase. one I actually researched and knew. Like, I don't ever look at the percentages or like the food costs. 
I just go. All right, just going go. on to Beals. So now we're down to two sheep to one sheep. So you can still win this. We're on question seven of 20. So we're, we're getting through this. We're already almost halfway through. Uh, Beal, how much does fertilization this cost? This is the food gathering upgrade two of three. So this is the castle two age. Two of three? Yeah, oh. this is the castle age upgrade for food. The fertilization, it's got the nice little scythe on it. I think it's Q right, right. the mill. How much mm -hmm. does that cost in, in the castle age? See, it's, it's something I would pay attention more in the in the feudal age for the feudal age upgrade, mm -hmm. but the castle age at that time, uh, typically, if I'm going to research it, it's more of the fact that I'm running low on food and I've got enough wood and gold. Uh, it is wood and gold. Why don't we say 100 wood, 225 gold? You are so close, but... <laughs> You got the wood number right. Uh, Sir Nevels, can you steal? Try and see if you can steal what the gold number is. Oh, for it. You, hey, why you tell me you got the wood right? Now you gave me half the answer. Because uh, you got it right. It's, oh. it's, it's close. Oh, what, okay, what do do? okay. Oh, so I was like, oh, we can steal like that. So if he gives me a little bit of a help, I can. Okay, so got the 100 wood. How much gold? 250 gold. That is 250 gold. 100 wood, 250 gold. Dude, hey, I'm sorry, Bill. You kind of you stepped me up with your sets on that one, dude. I would have never got that. That's okay. halfway there. That's okay. Now, now, now it's Neville's turn for an upgrade he probably never thinks about. So we're two and two, I think. We're two and two. Sir Neville's... Oh, gosh, buy it up. Sir Neville's, uh, what do the Imperial Eco upgrades cost? Now, this is for mining, food gathering, and wood gathering. They all cost the same in the Imperial Age. That final upgrade, how much do they cost? Oh, you mean that uh, age I never even reached? Okay, uh, let's go. All right. How much do they cost? So they're all universal, same price? Uh, well, one has, it's the same numbers. Uh, you just swap out food and wood and food, depending on uh, what the upgrade is. So you want me to go individually per tech? Yeah, so it it's going to be it's gonna be a wood slash food cost, and then there's going to be a okay. gold cost. Okay. It's just, just so, the one. Just if you, it's the same number, so just, as long as you give me the right numbers. Okay, 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 I got what you're saying. Okay. Oh, so maybe it scales. Maybe it's like, dude, I feel like I, I want to go more expensive than I think. Oh, so maybe for like one, it can be like, you said one's like a food slash gold. Uh, well, they're all, they all have a gold cost. That is okay. Yeah, a, yeah. A large well, gold cost. The one, and, then, the wood. and then the others have like wood slash food. So like, you can okay. say number wood slash food and number for gold, and that would okay. that, that's what we're looking for. Okay. It costs, it costs the same number of resources. Okay, I got you. So maybe one. Okay, I'm gonna, okay. So one is probably seventy five food. Seven. I'm sorry, I seventy five food. Excuse me. Seven hundred. I won't go fifty. Okay, no. Seven hundred and fifty food. And. 500 gold. Oh, you man. actually have oh, the, okay, I'm going to do the same thing for Beal as I did for you. You got the gold number. The gold number okay, is correct. Man. 500 gold is correct. Your uh, wood That's slash expensive. food number oh, is wrong. Okay, so I'm going to, what's the pattern? It was, what, 25, 50 for the other resource in the other ages. So I'm going to just say 100 either Wood or food? A uh, oh. hundred wood. It was for the second, the castle age upgrade. This one is two hundred and fifty wood or food, and then always five hundred gold. Okay. Oh, so the, wow. gold, the gold cost ends up being the the biggest uh, thing you got to pay for. That's a seven hundred and fifty. Yeah, you think you did? You said a lot. Now, Jeez, now there oh, are there wow. are some there are uh, there are some texts that cost close to that in gold. So we'll get to those okay. later. I think okay. we're still two and two as far as sheep goes, right? Yep. Okay, we're, we're about halfway. How, okay, this, this question was to Sir Neville, so this one now goes to Beal. Beal, how long do arrow slits or, or fortifying outposts slash sprinkle and placement technologies take to research on an outpost? Yeah, I never build defenses. They're all, they're all the same. They're all the same. Yeah. Surprisingly, not as long as you might think. I'll, uh, I'm gonna say 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds. Not too long to get up. Oh, you're so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's three sheep to be able two for Sir Neville's. Might need to get that second scout out. Oh, man. All right, here you go, uh, Sir Neville's. Now, for this question, this is we're talking about now blacksmith upgrades. Okay. Um, now, for the 
we're talking this well, the question is how much do the first tier blacksmith upgrades cost for we're talking like for steeled arrow uh for mm -hmm. uh what are the other ones called? I forget, but yeah, like just just the the, the, the those four mesh. core. Yeah. yeah, we're not talking. We're not talking like the the siege one. We're not talking the, uh, yeah. the production speed one. We're just talking the actual armor and attack upgrades for tier one. Man. The first ones you can get. Uses often too. I never looked that long it takes the property. So there's ah. there's obviously the the first cost being one of the lesser resources. And then there's a gold cost. So I'm gonna give you the cost of the time to research. Uh, the cost. Oh, I forgot you know this too. Oh, one second, I do this all the time. What's going on, Veggie? Okay, so cost. Oh man, dude, you got my dude. I I just I probably should read this online more because I'm like, oh, I should have told you guys to, like, to oh, study yeah. up a little bit. No, actually, you're right, you're right, but like, actually, no, it didn't matter because I would have never even I don't know what's I would have overstudied and like. Okay, so man, what is it? I'd be just uh, as bad as you guys at this, so don't don't feel too bad. Like I, I was looking at these going, man, I didn't know half of these. I was doing some studying <laughs> this week. Yeah, so usually it's it's wood, it's wood and gold for blacksmith upgrades. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're on par. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got my whole, you know that like uh that always sunny in Philadelphia, you know that little meme. I got the uh I'm got, I'm, I'm going to calculate. So I'm go I'm go one twenty five gold and so, no mm, fifty wood. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, let's go. I was saying seventy-five wood. I nope, was 50, say, fifty wood, one twenty-five gold for those basic upgrades for I think tier that's one. The same as uh, I think it's the same as fresh food stuff. I think it that might that's be. Most, know, the nice thing is most of these have pretty nice tiered numbers. They're like all like increments of like twenty-five for the most part, which is nice. Still talking about the blacksmith upgrades here, actually. Your question, Beal, is how long does a standard first tier blacksmith upgrade take to research? Again, those are the first, those core four upgrades. How long do those four like, ones take? I mean, if we're going with round numbers, I'm going to say 30 seconds again. <laughs> nope, that is actually not nope. correct. Okay. Uh, Sir Nevels, do you want to try and take the edge and get ahead? Wait, what, what's our score right now? Again? Oh. I just forgot. Is it still two and two? I think it's three, 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 three barracks just because i really need those upgrades because I, I want those sooner and that's usually why it takes it takes a full minute which wow. might not sound like a long time but in the middle of a oh, feudal okay. game that takes a, that's a long time yeah if, if you're not if you're not hitting that beforehand um yeah you've got to wait that minute i mean it's fine if you're researching it and then sending your longbows across the map yeah uh, but when they're already over there it's that's never going to get through in time well, that's why I always hate to see a blacksmith not being used because it takes so long to get those done. Now, that's of course not for counting Delhi. Delhi is a very different animal. We're talking standard oh, yeah. here. But all right, so I think the next question goes to Sir Neville's. We are three and three still. Uh, Sir Neville's, I'm curious if you'll know this one or not. I'm curious if anyone will know this one. I, I think I might. I would probably get this within five percent. But how much does geometry increase trebuchet damage by? We're looking for a percentage. Increase trebuchet. That's okay. So, trebuchet damage. I'm, I don't know why my head went to battering rams. Okay, trebuchet. It might. It might do that as well. I'm, I. I. I needed to double check on AOE four world. Oh, it just okay. was saying trebs, but I think this one might increase other siege damage as well. But for trebuchets in particular, yeah. what is the increased percentage of damage? Oh, uh, I think I know, but I think I'm wrong. Is it? Is it treb? Oh man, I, I'm going for it. Hundred percent. That would be the most busted tech of all time. No, it'd be amazing. <laughs> I, would, I would love that double damage. Wait, isn't there, isn't, there, isn't, there, isn't there one that, that that makes the bang rams like increase like damage by hundred percent? I, I think, I think that's the new the new tech. There's a new tech for battering rams now in Imperial Age. Oh, because I knew that. I think there's one that like blew and my it might mind. Be like, it might be like 400%. It's, it's something ridiculous. And it really or makes I could Rams be completely wrong. So I, wanted, I wanted to say something else, but okay, I'll give Bill a chance. Yeah, I'll have to, All, right. All right, Bill, what do you think? Is it 40%? Ah! 
No, it is 20%, only 20%. Ooh, so you're oh only God. getting, oh, yeah, basically it takes, if it takes a building five shots to get down, it'll take four. So, okay. I mean, that's okay, decent. That's when you okay. think about it like that, that's decent, I guess. It does make things go faster, but. Yeah, that's, four I was, seven, I was one, 50. Wow, I'm going to go risk making that thing. I'll send you 50. Okay. Yeah, wow. it's, I mean, it's still powerful, though, because, again, you're losing. It's one extra shot. It's free, basically, then, a lot faster. But, yeah, yeah. definitely. Question number 13 goes to, I think this one's going to now, Beal. Uh, how much does Military Academy increase production speed by? And this is that, the military, this is of the blacksmith upgrade yeah. that's got the right. little flag. Or the trumpet, or whatever it is. Ah, uh, is it fifty percent increase? Ah! Nope. Sir Neville's, any guesses? I feel like it's pretty, oh, pretty essential. <laughs> it's, it, I, I forget it all the time, but it's very essential. It's very essential. Uh, oh, is that fifty? Okay, I want to go half that. Twenty-five. Close, but ah! no. Uh, 33% or one-third. Oh, okay. third. Okay. Okay. We come to the odd numbers, it's over. Yeah, that, that's one of that's one of the, I, I thought that was an interesting one. I was like, oh, that's an <laughs> odd percentage. And I was like, oh, it's one third. That's so one yeah. one extra guy every three. Uh that's think, interesting. yeah, interesting, interesting tech. I I didn't I always clicked it because I, I do want the faster production speed, but I didn't really look into exactly what it does. So that, that's kind I'm of learning, I'm, I'm learning a lot from this game show. I that was my thoughts. This would be a good way to learn. Yeah, I hope everyone <laughs> yeah, listening is uh, trying yeah, to play along because this is this is definitely some Dude. good stuff to learn. It'll definitely this podcast is gonna be a, it's gonna be a really experienced ladder, man. I'm gonna yeah. start seeing a lot more stuff going on. Like, Wait a minute. All right, I think now we go to uh, this one's for Sir Neville's. How much do now? This is the same for all the upgrades I I found under the university. They're all the same cost. Uh, again, this might they might have a food or wood cost, and then there's always a gold cost, but the numbers are the same. So how much okay. do the university upgrades cost? Okay, I know these are I know these are a little bit more heftier. You know, these, uh -huh. are the, these are the big boy these ones. These, yep. These are the these late are the game. These are, exactly. These are the champagne of the upgrades, you know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. I'm going big. I feel like now I will I will give you guys a tip. Oh, I will give you, oh, I will give you oh, a quick, no. quick quick tip. Remember that okay. the gold count, the gold is almost always a bigger sum than the food or wood cost yep. for these upgrades. So, oh, really? Oh, I'm happy. Okay. So, gold. Okay. So, let's go 1750 gold, 500 wood. I think you have that backwards. But oh, either way, <laughs> the gold number should be bigger than the other wood number. But regardless, yeah, your numbers yeah, are yeah. wrong. Did I say it wrong? <laughs> even if, even, if wrong. We, even if we were flick, <laughs> reflect, uh, flop those around, they'd be wrong. Beal, oh, do you yeah, have any guesses? Got, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I know the gold count is 700. Um, it's just uh, because because when it comes down to it, like that's the one that I'm eyeballing, like uh -huh, waiting. Uh -huh. Like, okay, when can I start researching my that, fire? That is arrows? the important. I think late game that is the important one, and that does come at a heavy cost. I that is correct yeah. too, by the way. Uh, but for food. the for the minor resource, uh, three fifty seems too much. Three fifty seems or three hundred seems not enough. So yeah, let's say three twenty five. Oh, you're so close! It was three hundred. Really? Oh, yeah. I almost want to give yeah. it to you because you got the gold number right, and that is the more important one at that stage. But. Yeah. The that, that's the one that I'm, yeah, focused on when yeah. throwing up university. What do you think, Sir Neville? Should we give him the sheep or no? How hard line nah, are you going to be on? Don't no? give it to me. Don't okay, give it to me. Okay, okay. okay. Like Not it. give it to him. I like it. Don't, don't, don't ask his opponent. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that keeps us, I think, still three and three, right? Yeah, I think we still got oh, it. Oh, we still, oh, still at three. Okay. We're on question 15. We've only got oh, like five oh, questions yeah, left oh, here. Or six, spicy. including this one. Uh, this one goes to, uh, I think it's to Beal this time now. How much does incendiary arrows increased range unit damage by? And then we're looking for a percentage. And this is the, of course, the university upgrade for yeah. them. I'm going to say 33. Ah! It is not a third, no. So, Nevels, what do you think? What's the percentage? Dude, I feel like I feel like it's odd. I, I like we went to thirty three. I think it's not above. So I think maybe, man, I can't. I can only like think in increments of five. That's probably a good, that's a good, that's a good way to go. For most of these, the increments of five yeah. is a smart way to go. Yeah, five okay. or ten is a good way to go. 
man, you got my brains doing backflips. Uh, let's say, let's say, let's say a quarter. Let's say twenty-five. Ah! Oh, not hearing man. a lot of bells today. No, it is twenty percent. <laughs> Just twenty. Oh. Close though. Man. Close. All right, cool, cool. Like, All right, let's see if you know this one. This is one I actually would know. This is one I was like, oh, I would know this one if it came up. Uh, so Neville, this one goes to you. What does okay. Tithe Barns do? Tithe Barns increases the value. It uh, So Tithe Barns, I know this. Tithe Barns, so any every relic you have stored, it will give you food, gold, and wood. How much? Oh, I knew you were going to do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this one, so I'm, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be honest. So I know this one by heart. Uh, wait, so is it like individually? 50. <gasps> nope. Oh, I should have thought it more. Look at me it's trying a, to shoot the gun. I think it's 45 resource, resources per minute. <gasps> no, it is only 30. It's 30 food, 30 wood, 30, and 30 stone. What? 45. I thought it was prison. I don't know. I, if, I don't know. I don't know if HRE with regnets affects this at all. I would assume it doesn't, because that'd be okay. broken. But I, I'd have to check into that. But I know that for standard sieves, it's thirty to each. Plus, it still gets uh, the gold. So, man, yeah, dude, that that is like, I dang, I, it feels so valuable. Let me give you thirty per resource. I mean, resource. It, it is when you think about the stone you're getting for it. I mean, you're getting, oh, I mean, yeah, you're getting okay, three yeah. six. You're getting ninety resources extra. So, considering that yeah. you only get eighty gold for a, a relic, you're doubling the relic's value essentially, and then some. The, problem, the, the tricky thing is you don't usually need as much food late game as you do uh, stone yeah. or maybe even wood. But it is very, it is a valuable resource. I usually always very make sure valuable. to click that one up. I think as an English guy, it's always uh, enclosures and then tithe barns if I have the relics. Yeah, it's one that I forget because uh, monastery is really not like a place, a building that I'm clicking often in the late game. Mm. Usually it's get to castle, secure the relics. Um, and I don't play a lot of civs that do that. That use monks a lot that are specialized for monks. So after I've secured however many relics I can, maybe go for some sacred sites. Uh, yeah. I just forget about my monastery. Yep, I feel that. All right, we're almost to the end here. Now we go back to uh, this question goes to who just went? Who was question? I think it was me. For? It was you. I think it was, it was to Beale. Yeah, yeah it goes Beale. to Beal. All right, Beal. Well, you should. I'm hoping you'll know this one. Uh, maybe you won't because you haven't been playing a Civ as much as before, I think. But what does network, as of the patch now, what does network of Citadels increase the English speed bonus to? The 40%. Yep. Do you know what it's up from, by chance? Up from, I think, th uh, without that research, it's 10%. Close, it's 15. They didn't nerf it quite okay. into the ground. That's why I'm not upset All by right. the nerf, because it's still 15%. All right, I think that put, gives Lee, uh, Beal a four sheep now to Neville's oh. three. Oh, We've got cool. three questions left. Okay. Sir Neville's, you could, Sir Neville's, <laughs> if you get the next two right, Sir Neville's, you, I think, at least tie. And then we might have to, like, Don't do Don't put it. the pressure on me, man. I'm about to pass out. <laughs> uh, Sir Neville's, how, how familiar are you with HRE? Uh, you know, some things, you know, sometimes good, sometimes right, you'll see, right, you'll right, see. Right. Uh, Do you know what does heavy maces do? Heavy maces does, it increases, oh, I think I know this, dude. It increases damage to heavy units or heavy armor by plus six. Nice. <laughs> increases the HRE men at arms bonus damage by against heavy Yo, targets you, by plus six. Way to go. You did that. Hey, yo, you said, hey, man, I see you. We read the next year. You set me up for that. I like that. That's the only Kazak I actually know on HRE. So I try to fight you. Nice how much does that cost to research? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me close this tab real quick. We're good. <laughs> I have no idea how much that one costs. I can look it up real quick. Uh, Beal, I think we're now at four and four sheep. Uh, what does Cantilled Saddles do for French Knights? Uh, oh, God. How specific do you want me to get? Um... <laughs> as specific uh, I believe as you can. By 10. Increases the charge damage on knights by 10. I'm going to give that to you. It reached, yeah, it, the charge damage goes up to plus 10. It was plus 3 before, so technically it's only by plus Increases 7, but it it two. 2 plus 10. Okay. So I'm going to give that to you. I thought these were getting harder. We're getting spicy towards the yeah. end. Let's go. Uh, no, these, these were supposed to get a little harder, and you guys are doing a good job. Uh, question 20, last one for Sir Neville's. You got to get this from the tie it or Beal takes the cake here. What is the, or takes a sheep. 
what is the health increase for battle hardened? The, what, what, what? Uh, this is a weirdly worded question. So for oh, Chinese man, palace guards, there's a tech called battle hardened that increases their HP. How much does it increase it by? Oh, this is the one. This is the 10 one. 10-4 Tim is mauling right. right now that we're doing something about Chinese. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I don't know what's going on. I never played China. Uh, I don't play China enough. Oh, man. So what is so what is their armor increase? Or by? How much does their health increase by? We're looking for an HP number. How much does that number HP. go up by? Mm. Eight. Ah! Uh, <laughs> nope. Nope. Beal, do you want to see if you can just take it for, for kicks and giggles here? Are you, are you, are you greedy, bro? You to I don't know the percentage. Other? I'm looking for an actual HP number. I don't know if it's a percentage. For HP value? Yeah, HP uh. value. It's not eight. Uh, it's not eight. <laughs> <laughs> we know that much. Uh, I'm going to say 20. Close. Flat 20. Ah! It is uh, 30. So close, though. Close. Dude, what am I right. doing? I didn't think about that. Like, yeah, health. What would eight do? That's nothing. Yeah, eight, eight for a minute arm wouldn't, wouldn't be much. Yeah, I'd be yeah, like a junior shot. That's not cool. Yeah, that's not cool at all. And I was like, I'm not even using my brain here. Uh, yeah. That makes way more sense. Okay, yeah, I sold that one. Right. Well, I think that means Beal wins with four sheep to Sir Neville's three. But hey, you guys actually made it kind of competitive. So, I mean, these were not, to be fair, these were not <laughs> easy questions. I know most of us are familiar with around how much these cost. We know what's heavier and what's less heavy i don't think i can name the number of both like resources for a lot of these things i've got yeah. some you get some that you know like the, the university upgrades cost 700 in, gold you get those kind of things but it's easier in feudal where resources are tighter for me to like just be like okay i know i need to get 125 gold for this tech <laughs> yeah, or excellent this. point um but then by the time like castle age it's just click it, it. Just comes like <laughs> crap shoot of just like ah. Uh, I guess I need more food now. I'm like, I, I need to increase food production. For me, it's usually like, like oh, I'm floating resources. Let me just get some upgrades real quick and make sure I'm keeping yeah, up on those. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, we're going to take a tough. quick break. Uh, we'll have a quick little ad break and then we'll be right back. suffer from your opponent booming with too many villages that you feel your economy just can't keep up? Do you like a good feudal age fight instead of waiting 10 minutes each game to play in castle age? Perhaps archers are giving you grief, or you're tired of that long line of traitors. Maybe siege engines are wearing you down. Hello, I'm Professor Lancelot here at the Royal Knight Institute, and I want to tell you about www.morenights.com. We here at morenights.com have worked extensively to fix these very issues and are proud to share the solution. We've worked with experts across the equestrian warfare spectrum to bring you the latest in cavalry solutions. Our approach is quite simple. First, select a stables. Second, spam the W key on your computer. Third, receive your knights in as little as 35 seconds and enjoy battlefield domination. So from the brilliant minds of the Royal Knight Institute, I urge you to visit www.morenights.com today and bring your domination to the AOE4 ladder right now. www.morenights.com is not liable for any damages incurred by running your knights into spearmen, archer pilings, or other hazards such as town center fire, boiling oil, and cannon emplacements. Morenights.com is also not liable for rage quitting opponents, games ending faster, or when reaching platinum one inevitably goes to your head. All knights should be handled with care. Visit www.morenights.com for more details. We are back. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your adverts. Now we're here to, we, we've already been going for about an hour. Uh, amazing that that's, actually, no, we, we're almost an hour. We're getting up there. Uh, this will be a long episode, but our main discussion today is, of course, we've been talking about upgrades, had our game about upgrades. We're talking about the worst upgrades and technologies in AOE 4, and maybe our thoughts on what could make them viable again. If at all. Um, mm. Now, I guess the first question is, what are the worst upgrades? I've got one. I think no one will disagree mm. that professional scouts is probably one of the worst upgrades right now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's hard to know when you get a value of it. I don't know if you guys have any others you want to talk about. This will be kind of an open discussion. Maybe we'll just dive into professional scouts to start off. Yeah, they start with that. I'm, I'm going to look at some. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, right. professional scouts, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, allows your, it makes your, buffs up your scouts so they can now one-shot deer. Which is nice, especially if you like your roost. That'd be great, you know. Uh, one shot steer, and then you have the ability to pick up those deer and bring them back to your town center and drop them off as you please. 
Uh, the problem with this tech, I love this tech. I think some of the funniest moments in Age Empires 4 competitive scenes <laughs> have been when people have used this tech and done the good old deer yoink or the Grand Theft Venison. I think it's a lot of fun to see, but it costs 75 wood, which isn't too bad, but then it costs 275 gold, which in the feudal <laughs> age when this tech becomes available, Actually, is it a feudal? It might be a feudal age. I think. I think it's a feudal yeah, age. It's available. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's available in dark age. I don't. I don't think it is. So in in feudal age, though, two hundred and seventy five gold is a hefty sum to give up for a tech that okay. also takes. I think it takes like a minute and a half for it to be researched. And I mean, there's also other things like you can only hold one deer with a scout. Yeah, you also so have you to have to scouts. Take an entire pack. Uh, you need mass mm -hmm. scouts. As well, so it, it does come down. So my my thoughts on this, uh, the reason why it's so specific to a couple of sieves is because the conditions that you need for this to be effective at all, and you need something that can cover the high gold cost. You need a reason to have seven scouts, only two sieves that could meet those conditions. I know that Mollyans is one of them. Yeah. And Molly and, and Roos being the, yeah. Because um, you're going to have additional scouts as Roos anyway. You're going to have at least three, and building them from the hunting cabins isn't going to be an opportunity cost really elsewhere, just the food cost. So that's fine. With Molly the warrior scouts are better scouts, anyways. So they could be part of your military. But. You also need to cover that gold cost. The gold as cost well. is hefty. Well, and, and the wood cost isn't too bad, but you've got, like you mentioned, you have to have the infrastructure to make, you have to put 150 wood into for a stable. Then you've got to make, or, or something equivalent to make scouts. I guess for a roost, they have the yeah. hunting cabins. So that makes it a lot easier, I think, for roost, which is why it's one of the two sieves, I think, that can use this semi-regularly. But... I did some math. If you guys don't mind me getting a little technical here, I did some oh, math looking into this because I was I was curious because I I had a fun game I was playing with. I think it was uh, might have been my brother in law, might have been my uh, or Tabith. I forget who, but I was playing a game where I was playing HRE. It was on uh, what is that one that map that has the mountains and the woodland and you're really close together? Mountain clearing. I was mm -hmm. on mountain clearing. I was playing as Ooh. HRE and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for the YOLO professional scouts. And I yoinked all the deer. It was so much fun. It was a ton of food. <laughs> This, this can have a huge payoff in certain situations, but it's just so easy to, the, the, it takes so long to get your monies back. And let me do, let me do the math here for you guys. So each <clears> deer <throat> gives you 350 food. And it's one of the faster gathering rates in the game. So 350 food, and they tend to spawn in groups of seven deer. Doing some quick math, that's about 2,450 food per deer pack. So if you're doing it for just one deer pack, you're putting in uh, a good, I think I did some math. It was like 150 for the uh, wood for the stable to get the get the deer. If you're a standard sieve that doesn't have any other way to making scouts. And then you've got to invest a good, it's like seven. So you need like three or four scouts at least. So multiply that by 60. It, it turns into a lot of food. You're, you're netting maybe a thousand food. 1,700 food is what I was getting out. If you get one deer pack. Now, of course, yeah, but you're also denial, uh, the denial. That yeah, that's something to consider, too. If you're getting just the deer pack okay. next to your base, not worth it, not worth it at all. However, if you if you're getting two or three deer packs, that number starts looking really good. I mean, twenty four hundred times like three is going to be two, four, six, like seven or eight thousand food. And especially if you deny it from your opponent, that grand theft venison, that could be a swing. Again, the hardest part, though, for this, though, is that it's just not viable for most civilizations at all because right. of that gold cost and the amount of time mm -hmm. it takes to research. So what do we I mean, and what do you do like with other civs? What do you do <laughs> after the fact with seven scouts like Molly yeah. can yeah. add them to an army because they're warrior scouts? I mean, Roos is already going to have multiple scouts, so it's not terrible to add a few more. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, try to throw in your army and give you some, uh, some, just like some viewings, a little bit of uh, sight. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to have a lot of scouts. Seven scouts mm -hmm. seems a yeah, little, no, a, little, a, little yeah. a little, a little too much for an English <laughs> player. Uh, I mean, yeah, post them up across the map, but might not be the best, uh, wisest use of the resources. Anyways, uh, I mean, what you could do, like the Rus and Mali can certainly use this for against um, sieves that want to delay the farm transition as long as possible. 
So effective against the French, who yeah. love to just blob out on the map, take all the food, all the food that they can. Effective against like Ottomans too, who also like the map control, don't want to like they don't get a berry bonus. So deer are certainly the better choice. If you can force um, out Anatolian hills, that'd be that feels pretty good. If you force out Anatolian hills against Ottomans, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially if they don't want to go Anatolian hills, like. And playing Ottomans, there are some times where Anatolian is is the choice, like against French. It's it's so good against French. But if you don't have to take that tech, mm. uh, it's better not to. So uh, what do we do to make this? I mean, I obviously I, I asked Blade five 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 what his thoughts were, and he did not want this to be a viable tech. He did not like the idea of it no. being viable. Uh, I, I'm sure some pros don't. I mean, do we? I I, I think it's just so much fun to see. But we run right. the risk of it being the only meta as well if it's too powerful. What do we do to make this maybe more viable? Or should it only be viable for just Roos and Malians? Or should it be more no. viable for others? No, it should be an absolute edge case tech. Uh, I think... <laughs> I, I, I don't want to see games where this is researched all the time and it turns into a mini game of deer stealing. <laughs> see, I disagree. Um, I disagree. I disagree, I disagree yeah. dude. What I love that. Okay. Okay, like, so, like, when the game, okay, first of all, I think professional scouts, if you ask me, the fact that, because it comes out of your, it's a technology, was that your stable? Uh, it comes out of your mill. Tech. Your mill. Okay, I think that, I think that is a little, okay, this is how it balance it. If, it, if it's going to be that expensive and take that long to research, I believe when the game first launched, and I'm probably in a very much a minority with this one. I believe them slowing down the scouts made it not as viable as it used to be. When the game first came out, professional scouts, like it would be like, it was like a, a racing game. Like it was a race. Like maybe because then, because a lot of people disagree because a lot of people like that when you pick up because of certain civilizations, certain civilizations had a more of an advantage. Because for example, the, uh, the, um, no, actually, I'm actually drawing a blank here because no. I'm thinking about the warrior monks. No, yeah, yeah, make the scouts faster. Again. I, I, I believe that it made more of a grand, uh, grand way called grand theft venison, because at that point in time, the games had professional scouts were more viable. Like I feel like they kind of died out once they became slow. Once they became slow, it just it was never worth it. It took forever, and then like you know you got your, your scouts jogging across the map. And like you said, it just like then you're kind of like it didn't even feel worth it. You made all these scouts, spent all this money getting these scouts, delaying your TC possibly, or the hunting cabin is a little bit different. But most, you know, most uh, not, oh my excuse, that's said TC. Excuse me, uh, delaying like you know your uh, why am I bugging on the stables? You're delaying your stables, and you know it don't sometimes doesn't feel worth it. But I feel like if scouts, if scouts can actually move fast again with the hunt on their back. It would be more viable. It would be a lot more viable because the only reason why people stopped doing it, once they got slow, you they can get interrupted so heavy and it just didn't seem worth it the end. So you ask me what I feel is a big issue. Yeah, you gotta if not as fast as they used to be, because they used to take off. They used to take off and take hunts. But maybe give them like in between what they were and what they are now. And maybe decrease that cost a little bit, because that's pretty expensive. Maybe yeah, two seventy five like, gold is is rough. I, I feel yeah, like maybe, maybe if it was yeah. two hundred gold, I, I'd feel a, yeah. a bit better. I don't know. I, I just don't want games where <laughs> I don't want I don't want professional scouts to be a choice in every single game. I like okay. it as the niche tech. Um, I like it as oh, you you take a look at the map, you see where the deer packs are. You you're either Roos or Molly, and you're like, you know what, you know what, I bet. I can really screw with my opponent. Um, <laughs> put in the investment because you got to make the hard decision if the investment is a lot. Uh, so, it's like, ah, you know what? I really could just deny these from my opponent. I am going to spend the resources and the time to make enough scouts to actually go for this and do this. Um, instead of just, I don't want it every game where. Oh, look, he's stealing my deer. I'm stealing their deer. And mm. even if it's like, like 
I don't want to see French playing with professional scouts. Yeah. I, don't want to see, I, I do. I do. I do agree with that. Yeah. I think it's it's not mm-hmm. something I think because it used to be everyone just did it. It felt like every single. I mean, Roos was on top of the game too back then. It felt like a lot of people went for professional scouts. I think at this point though, it feels like it's just dead, and I don't love that yeah. either. I, I kind of agree that I wouldn't want to see this be the main meta. I would love to see maybe instead of I feel like only two civilizations even have a viable option with it. It'd be nice to see maybe if a Civ or uh, maybe like two or three, like maybe three, three or four Civs total had a more viable use of this. Uh, of this Maybe like one yeah, or two others had maybe a, a slightly cheaper gold option, it's especially Civs that might struggle in other economic ways. I don't know. It's, it's, it's okay. a Civ I, I so, enjoy watching, though, or it's a tech I well, like to see. If you, if you had to choose a Civ and give them an additional Civ bonus on a patch where they got cheaper professional scouts, what Civ would that be? That's a tough question, isn't it? What is, I mean, Molly, I think Molly is in a good place with it. Oh, they yeah, are. Make I agree. Better, make them better. Good place with it. But if you had to pull another Civ into, into the professional scout world, you think you'd give the bonus to... I mean, it makes sense from a flavor perspective, giving it to the Mongols. Yeah. Mm. Um, because I also think they it'd be kind could, of fun for HRE. Ubu, they could double produce scouts. Um, gold cost would be a little bit, but going in like raiding to actually take the deer back home. Oh, it'd be so like, great. It fits thematically with uh, Mongols. Uh, so if they were to get a little, uh, you know, if you built if you built a gur around an Uvu, you could get like improved professional scouts and now honestly i'm oh wow. searching this right now to see if this isn't already okay. I've, I've got i've but got i've got a sieve i'd like a, to see this with i'd like to see a viking sieve be super viable with professional scouts oh dude don't even start on viking sieve. i got so many ideas for viking <laughs> i i think i think besides that i agree with mongols maybe having a more viable and maybe hre having just a little see, bit more uh, viability with it. i disagree with that i disagree with the hre because they're going to get that castle even faster they're going to drop it on the rock and chapel fair. And they're going to go even more insane. I don't know. I think, like, I see what you're saying, the HRE. Like, but I remember, like, well, when the Akin Chapel first became a turn in, a gathering spot, like, a lot of people were getting, like, literal, oh, like, true. seven minute castles by just building the Akin Chapel on the deer. What and if, just, what if, hear me out, what if it was only in the Mine yeah. Work Palace? Ooh. It was like, what if it was, like, what if it was a slightly cheaper tech in the Mine Work Palace? Ooh, now you're getting spicy. Now you're getting spicy. Yeah. But that's such a that's such a risk. I, I mean, for HRE to build, but, but, but it'd be weird though too, though, because I the the my work palace is like more of like a military upgrade. So uh-huh. it's yeah, like, but, it's, I mean, but, but now I wait. Now I hear you because mine work into stables. Uh huh. Is the feudal? Oh wait a minute! HRE mm-hmm. You guys are hearing me? Because the armor uh, for stable units that are already present in mine work. That'd be a uh, tough choice then. Then, then, you, then the build yeah. would be going into mine work stables, taking the deer so you can sustain your economy at home, and you could then be a, a more aggressive sieve instead of just a tanky kind of castle up with Aachen and just boom. Yeah, that would change. It would change the game yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. I want to get even more viable. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> Wait, That's my hot take of the day. You might be changing my mind on it now. One second. <laughs> Okay. See, and it would only okay. be recently only have that bonus be in the mine work. Have it be like instead yeah. of two seventy five gold, have it be like one seventy five gold. Like just just like just Get enough this, to make right. it like worth it. Get this man a contract. Let's go. <laughs> I'm here all day, relic. If you want to sign me on, I'm, I'm willing. Uh, well, let's move on from professional scouts. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the Imperial Age mining upgrade. Um, mm-hmm. I watched an Age of Noob back when this this used to cost seven hundred gold. It is now five hundred gold to get this upgrade. There's a couple, pro- even still, I asked a couple of uh, big guy streamers, you know, and they all said I hardly ever use this uh, this upgrade. It's the Imperial Aging Mining, and the, the problem is it costs five hundred gold, and you're using it to mine more gold. The second problem is yeah. it increases the gathering rate, but then you're at, at late game Imperial Age when you're mining gold. You run out of gold veins. Trade becomes your main source of gold. So this is, I think, one of the worst upgrades in the game. I don't know that I've ever really gone for it unless I'm on, like, maybe French Pass is the only time I might consider it. What do you guys think? Yeah, that makes I sense, though. Don't I think agree. I've ever clicked this. I, also, I, 
I rarely like the Castle Age uh, eco upgrades are also kind of conditional to to where I am. And the Castle Age eco upgrades for me are more of a question of is my eco out of balance? Yeah. I think, I think I the exception of the food, it? I feel like I think fertilization is probably the one because you're going into a farm transition. That's that benefits it massively. I would say that's one that is really good. That is true. Uh, for that like the, true. The, the wood upgrade in the castle age, I agree with this as well. It might it starts wondering if it's even worth it. I, I see. I'm actually thinking about something else that makes I feel it makes it even worse, too, is that uh, when, when it increases the uh, gather rate, it also makes so you you will run out of gold faster. Like you'll use your gold vein up even faster, which I think is even more detrimental to the uh, to the upgrade. I've had that thought, but then at least that gold's in the bank. Yeah, yeah, but like you want to use that up. See now, see now, I like me for example. Like I like I would like to like spread out my bills more. So if it comes down to me, like the gather rate, yeah, it's going to your bank. But then eventually you're using up more of the gold on the map. So you got to make a transition either to trade or something even faster. Like, yeah, it's going to your bank, but the amount of money it costs 500 gold, like one, two, and then, oh, yeah, okay, the research is not that bad, but 500 gold. And then you're like, you know, you're going through the gold mines even faster. So, like, how, first of all, you probably, you probably pay it back pretty fast. You but don't actually. I, that's actually the problem is you don't. This is the biggest problem with that. Is oh. it takes Because each of these upgrades is 15% increase the gathering rate. So in the very first age, that's a pretty good increase. Then you're going to plus 30 yeah. and then plus uh, 45. 45. Which is it's it's good, but like you run it out of the gold. Interesting, because so the way Age of Empires 2 did it, um, it was like a 10% increase in gathering rate in feudal, and then like 20% increase so it wasn't 15, 15, 15. It was much bigger increases in gathering rates in later ages to deal with the additional costs. Mm, yeah, so whereas here the costs exponentially go bigger, but not the increase. To, like, yeah, invest into eco upgrades because it would pay itself back off quicker um, because the gathering rates to the higher levels of eco upgrades uh, were much bigger than in AOE 4. Mm. Yeah, I, I've I've looked up a couple of things on this, and everything I see is that because a lot of things you got to think when you're getting a technology, uh, with the exception of like the military upgrades for eco upgrades, it's gonna take. There's gonna be a time where the resources you invested are gonna take some time to pay it back, and then start giving the dividends you need. And that mm -hmm. can, that usually is somewhere for at least a couple minutes. Usually like two to three minutes is what you're looking at. This final uh, uh, imperial upgrade because of its cost, it's like six or eight minutes. It, it's up there. And it was worse when it was uh, 700 gold, but even still, it's just, you're going to go into trade and it's just not worth it. So my, my professional opinion is, I don't know what it would take to make this more viable. Um, I don't know I what mean, you can do to make it viable. Just do what you do. Just, just do what AOE2 does. You got, you got just bigger gathering rates for later techs, um, smaller mm -hmm. bonuses in feudal, bigger bonuses in imperial. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we know, man, we're not, we know, this is, we know, AOE 2. We know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the closest, yeah, comparison, because it is, it's basically, it's so similar uh, yeah. in, in how the games are structured yeah. that, I mean, I, I think that's how you solve it. But then it also comes down to the point where in AOE 4, it is a question of when do you want to take the eco upgrades? Because in AOE 2, it's, automatics like yeah i will take every single eco upgrade mm, every okay. game because it's it's necessary it, they're so good where in aoe4 it does become more of a question of okay do i really think do i really want to spend these six minutes at a little bit of an economic disadvantage to build an advantage down the line i think that's a more interesting question than yeah. make this viable auto pick every yeah. single time automatically going to research. I mean, there are See, those, there are those technologies in this game too, that are that good. I look, I think of yeah, like wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow is yeah. a must. If you don't have wheelbarrow by 10 minutes yeah, in, yeah. you've done something wrong. You should always get that one by around Six at minutes. least the 10 minute mark, depending on what save you're mm -hmm. playing. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, moving on to maybe, uh, I want to talk about water technologies for a moment too. I've, I've got a lot of things and I, I am going to open up to you guys as well to see what sieves oh, or what yeah, techs yeah, you guys yeah. think are, are just in the trash and need to maybe be touched on. Water techs, 
I don't think, do we have, a, I, my, my big thing is I don't know how viable they are because I don't play with them. I just kind of click them at haphazardly. Uh, maybe this is on me and I just need to be better at it. But do you feel that people even have a working knowledge of these, these techs? Mm. No, uh, no. I don't. Um, I, I mean, I thought I knew what the uh, improved lines did because <laughs> that is the water tech I take, but it's <laughs> rare that I take any other. I mean, I'll click if it does turn into a naval battle, if I'm playing Baltic, then yeah, sure. I'll pick up the military upgrades, but I'm not. It's less of a scrutinize what exactly they do and more of like, oh, this makes my sprinkle chips better. This makes my archer ships better. This makes my demo ships better uh, rather than the specifics of what the actual techs do. Do we think it's just because we, in general, I think the community kind of has a disdain for water maps? Is that kind of why? Mm -hmm. I think I think water maps are becoming more. They're coming with, with the uh, with the update. They I don't know what season they update in, but with the balance in water, I feel like people uh, players are starting to become a little bit more fans of water based on like yeah. on the rock paper scissors method. So I believe that it is starting to become like, I think people that start turning their minds around and realize like, oh, these actually, these water techs actually make a difference too now because they actually, even though our knowledge of them isn't quite there, we don't really pay, like we kind of like glance over them. They actually are very, they make giant changes to, you know, for example, your gathering rate or just if you are defending your naval combat, like some of these, like I'm looking at some of these techs and I'm just like, I didn't even know, like, for example, like, for the HRE fire stations, like your military ships generate one health every two seconds out of combat. Basically, it's like chivalry for your ships. And I didn't even know. It's like, like, I'm like, whoa, what? Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Wow. Yeah, and it, it is kind of a shame that uh, a lot of the community looks down on water maps because water maps are great. I, always, I like water. I always keep one in the uh, in my ranked like mm -hmm. list to play because uh, they're always good. Like it mixes things up. Yeah, uh, I, had, I, really saw, I saw a really interesting post. Uh, and this, this could be a whole other topic from the other day. I just want to mention it briefly <laughs> while I have it in my mind. Someone mentioned like that water is just a bit too powerful. And I, I've got mixed opinions on this. I, I Sometimes I love water, sometimes I don't. It's better now than it was. Uh, I think we can agree on that. But someone had the idea of maybe there should be two different types of docks. One for eco and then one for military building. That way, there's a bit more of a decision making process as to what you're doing, and I thought that was interesting, but mm. I don't know, how, don't know how I feel mm. about that. I don't know. So I, I think, I think the way that water is going to be solved is by the design of the maps. Like when you've got a map like Boulder Bay or Baltic with one giant area of water in the middle of the map, um, those get that's a little rougher because it just turns into okay, who wins this? Who gets the extra food eco? Who can start building trade eco? Um, but you've got, I, I like water holes uh, or slash Kawasan as it was. Mm -hmm. in I like that map a lot. Um, water holes is really cool. I'm a huge fan of any four lakes map where mm, yeah. you basically get to build a Navy uh, without really dealing with someone else. Like you can set up your fishing eco and not really have to defend it as much as you would um, on a Baltic map. Although there's still like opportunities for your opponent or you to set up a dock on your opponent's pond. So there's still some counterplay options, but it lets you fish in peace. I've noticed that the trend seems to be that like big open water is not a fun thing to play on, whereas smaller, yeah. more contained water is better. So I guess, I mean, that does kind of speak mm -hmm. to just that water on a, a big naval battle is not very well balanced then, whereas small naval skirmishes feel better. I love big open naval battles. I'm, I'm in minority with that. <laughs> I think yeah. I, I think they're I think they're pretty good. I think they're pretty well balanced. It's like it's literally rock, paper, scissors. I think the problem hard thing, too, is that it just feels weird seeing a bunch of ships shooting arrows at each other. For me, I just feel like that feels anachronistic to my mind. I think of like big naval battles as it being like an imperial age kind of big cannons and broadsides being a bit more like the thing but that, that's a bit for that'd be I mean, like an age five kind of deal that's where like muskets and things were a bit uh, thing you, you hit you hit age four you do get uh cannon yeah 
Get but the like, big war galleys. I mean, how often yeah. have we had an age four naval battle on that scale, though? Like, it's not yeah. not common. And I think it's yeah. just water is one, and then whoever wins water tends to win the game very early, usually yep. in Castle Age. Most likely they do. You're right. Um, my final tech I've got is I was got, we were going to talk about this. I mentioned this earlier. Textiles. It only takes mm-hmm. 20 seconds to research. I, it is a forgotten tech that isn't used too often until, like, unless the French are really pressuring you and you're like, oh, crap, fine, let me just get textiles real quick. What are our mm-hmm. thoughts on this? Is this a good, I mean, it, it's a decent, on paper, it's a decent looking upgrade. Uh, in case you guys don't know, it's 20 seconds to research and it takes, I think it's plus, what's that? I think 20% textiles. Let me take a look real quick. Textiles uh, increases villagers' health by plus 25. Pretty decent thing to have. Uh, it costs 50 food and 100 gold. So not, Terribly, but enough that early because you can get it right off the bat. I believe. I think it's available in feudal age. So that's a that's a hefty sum to pay. Available in feudal. dark. No, no, it's uh, available in feudal. Oh, really? I, okay, I believe so that. I, I'm once again confusing this with, uh, and we we can go back to AOE two versus AOE four. Ah, uh, here you go. Here yeah. you go, dude. <laughs> Where you, you compare this with Loom in AOE two, which yeah. is a must mm-hmm. take. You must take Loom for your villagers, which gives extra HP and some uh, additional armor for the vills. And it comes out of the town center, and it's at the cost of producing a villager. Uh, where textiles is more of a situational pick, I think. Yeah, uh, I usually try again, and get it right. Whenever I go to TCs, I usually try to queue it up somewhere in there, just because I think it's good to have if you ever get raided or just anything like that later game. I try to remember it, but I've done games where I don't even get it. Mm. Done a lot of games where I don't get it, um, but I do think this is a great like anti-French tech, where you force those French knights to take one more, to hit your villagers one more time uh, before they can kill them. Um, I feel like it, it saves a lot more villagers than otherwise against early French rushes. Mm. What do you think, Sir I, I believe. I believe it's uh I believe it's underrated. I I think that because like I mean I've almost experienced this firsthand. Obviously, like I have a little bit of a problem walling up, a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of an issue, uh, really protecting my economy. But I mean, textiles, it's like it, I feel like it just pays back. I mean, because your economy is so important. Like I mean, like it just even and like I'll research it. It is kind of more so like situational because like you get like you know if you're playing like China or uh, civilization that booms more, usually not trying to like you know raid your economy off rip. But I feel like it's something that it uh you know I mean it doesn't scale. That'd be kind of cool if it scaled, you know. But mm-hmm. you know it, it's like that's where I feel like it could do a little better because like you know early game textiles is like it, it, especially against the French you know, English. You know, or maybe Mongol civilizations that kind of want to like, you know, slow you down from, you know, really feudal ships good in the feudal age and want to slow you down from aging up. Uh, I believe that textiles is very, uh, very good because, for example, like when a, a Mongol's tar rushing you, you can get textiles and you can actually fight his spearmen with your vills or burn his, like you, your villagers can kind of become more of a weapon a little bit. And I feel that, I really feel that, you know, just from first hand experience, just having that little extra health protecting that economy is just it kind of trumps like it just you i think taking for you take it for granted you feel like oh i'm just gonna just like you know protect my bills like you know big deal just tower up and or whatever the case might be but i really feel like you know it i feel like it's good but it could be better because i really would prefer it to scale as you go like as, obviously as your military starts doing more damage your villagers can take more damage i think too in age of empires not to keep bringing up aoe too i think in aoe too there are tiers to upgrading your civs with your villagers with defense yeah if i remember cool. correctly uh, no it's just no? it's just loom just from loom. the uh although yeah one of the civs does their one of their bonuses is that all their villagers get the blacksmith upgrades as well so and their bills cool. get pretty tanky and mm. can also start fighting a little bit because i think sir brings a good point to this this i think it it's it reaches a point where if you have like imperial age knights in your base they're doing it and they have all their blacksmith upgrades they're hitting your vills down fast enough anyways textiles ain't gonna make a difference really but there is a window where it is viable i, I think for me my biggest thing about not doing it is that i don't usually want to pin i mean it's, it's 50 food and 100 gold so it costs a villager plus 100 gold essentially and it takes 20 seconds 
to me, I thought it, I always thought in my mind it took longer because that's basically the time it takes to build one villager out of your town center. So you're delaying one, you're giving your opponent one vill lead on the hopes that he won't kill a vill if he raids you later. So I, I definitely think it's a, I don't know if it's underrated or if it's just kind of forgotten or if it's just very, very, maybe it's just more situational. It's a little more both. situational, yeah. I think it's a little both. A little bit of both for some levels. I think it's yeah, definitely situational. Yeah. I think sometimes I have leaned so far into not doing it. I maybe have, I maybe have still underrated it personally. I think especially once you go for a second town center, my rule of thumb, I mean, I think Sunevels mentioned a good point earlier uh, in our game show that like maybe when you have two town centers, you don't need it as much either because you can replace those villagers faster. So right. maybe you need it more when you have just one town center. So I, I don't know. There's <clears> definitely <throat> a lot of considerations. I'd have to really dive, do a deep dive into seeing like what the optimal use of this is. I don't because I don't really know. <laughs> that's the beauty of the game who knows it's all up there all yeah, if agent Newt wants to make a video on textiles i'd be more than happy to watch <laughs> that, 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 yeah that, that'd be huge that'd be yeah cool. i would actually like to watch that just because it's it is a tech i don't take as often as maybe i should because 100 yeah. gold isn't that much and 50 wood 50 foods not that much either and 20 seconds is super quick mm -hmm. I, I might need to do a deep dive and maybe i'll make it i i'm not gonna make a video but i should take the time to really figure it out. Cause I think it's, it definitely seems a little bit underrated to me. I think that time it takes you, the fact that it's such a quick one mm -hmm. makes me think that it might be more worthwhile than others, especially if you have a little extra gold or if you have something else that's getting you extra gold. And if you're mm -hmm. getting some pressure by an opponent, I definitely think it might be worth the mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't say, I, it's, so. I wouldn't say it's a bad tech. That's for sure. Oh, most definitely not. I feel. Um, okay, I'm gonna open up to you guys. What are you what do you guys think are the worst technologies in the game right now? And this could be specific, this could be just anything. What are some I don't play the same civs you guys play? Because like for me, like network of citadels is a must. Um well, yeah, yeah that, that is certainly on the high end of, of yeah. Tech. Yeah, tech. Um, yeah, I, I do have some thoughts too, as far as like uh I know there's like an upgrade for the Arbitrie, I think, as far as getting like there's some 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 uh units have, like melee those, armor. Like the melee armor. Yeah, is that worth it? Do people use that uh, ability? Isn't that, is it more of an active? I, I can't remember if that's a passive melee armor upgrade or if it's, or if it's the ability. Actually activate it I think it's in... the activated. You have to hit Q and activate it. Is that oh, a lousy? Because wow. okay. I, I, I was thinking about, I've been thinking about palings. In fact, this might be my extra sheep or it was one of the things. I was thinking about palings mm -hmm. and like, I don't ever use palings. Should I be using that more as an English player? Yeah, like should. I, I should be. And, I, and how many people don't use those little extra abilities for like, Arbitrier, how often do you put up the shields and actually use that ability? Right, I, I forget that it, that exists for the Arbitrier. Uh, like, there are times where I get, I send in some horsemen to deal with some longbows and just start, like, punching my desk because they drop the palings. <laughs> and now I can't get around to the back and I can't actually engage into the longbows. Is it worth with the five seconds it, it gives them, they're able to take out a couple of my horsemen. And now the fight's lost for me. Yeah. Is it, is it worth I, putting I, your, your archers in a line, in the line formation, then doing palings? Is that like the way to go? Oh, to yeah. like... I, I don't know. I think it's more of a clump. I think if you can get like a paling ring around the outside, keep your mm. archers in a clump. Uh, we want to talk about like underrated text. Being able to use palings as English is so underrated. I don't see nearly enough English players yeah. using it. Myself actually, included. Hey, actually, it's pretty funny you say that. Uh, going back to like the uh, goal we... Uh, the pro player, dude, what am I bugging his name? Uh, Vortex. This dude, this dude's like some, like, they consider him like, you know, some, uh, he's like a micro guy. He did his, he tried doing that. Like, he, uh, he had knights in, uh, uh, longbowmen. And what he did with the knights of their charge, he brought his, uh, he brought the longbowmen forward, used the paling, stopped that, and then moved them, moved them back and moved his knights up when they charged. Like, it was some, it was like some wizardry. Ooh, ooh, Man. that's like, uh, was dirty. Yeah. Yeah, it was some wizardry this dude did, but like he like I like I think that the people people sing that more, people probably were like players are probably be like oh that might actually be pretty smooth because like he completely shut out their uh you know their charge and then he died from his knights and he got his charge off so like it was it's that's some heavy micro that's like some wizardry stuff but like, yeah, yeah. palings uh you made showed his value right there for sure. You guys play uh some of the more uh, like Delhi and Abbasid, those kind of civs. I don't play those as often. They've got a lot of civ specific upgrades and technologies. Are there any that are just absolutely trash that no one should ever look at or need some kind of help? 
I mean, uh, things that I don't look at. I don't look at the trade wing in Abbasid, and maybe I should, trade. but I couldn't tell you what any of the techs in the trade yeah, wing do. I don't, I don't trade really um, ever. But I think all the other techs um, They're pretty- coming out of the Abbasid House of Wisdom are viable and some are things that you'd want. You get like an additional farm eco upgrade. I mean, you get the... What is it? Not fresh food stuffs anymore. The Fertile Crescent, which That's is excellent. huge. You get the the tech that gives you um, discounts on technology, which is an amazing tech. I have one. Then, okay. you, don't think, you, know, you can take no, it. No, go for I, it. Go for it. I'm coming across one here that looks absolutely trash. I've never used it. <laughs> okay. But, okay, so th- I can't pronounce it. I like it was. I remember yeah. this. I never ever used it, but I remember this tech for the Abbasid. They changed the name of it, but it was originally called Faith. Now it's called Prozil, Proziltization, Proselytization. I don't know, but it yeah. has it to where the, the uh, their proselytization Amens. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. their Amens can convert units without a relic and only convert a single unit. That's, that's, like, that's like old, yeah. AOE2, old school like conversion happening yeah. right yeah. there. I've never seen anybody do that before. I would, you know, I would love to see Abbasid against Delhi and just get a bunch of like single elephant conversions. That would be huge. Oh my gosh, that'd, that'd, be that'd be crazy. That would be crazy. That'd be crazy. I think outside of that, like single unit conversion with just the amount of cooldown that that would take. Yeah. Uh, just, just not worth it. Where back in, back in AOE 2, where it was all single unit, you didn't need to use a relic to convert. Yeah, can't you so, like snipe but, convert in AOE 2? Yeah. Basically, that's insane. I will be in this modern. It, it's, that's why it's why it's a super micro intensive kind of thing to see, too. That's yeah. crazy. That's um, actually pretty. I'm impressive. going through some of those things. Oh, uh, what about for Delhi? Slow burning defenses. Is that worth anything? Oh, what is that? Have, the fire yeah, armor yeah, of Stonewall Towers up. keeps an outpost by plus 10. How good is that? I don't know. I've never used that. <laughs> I, that's crazy. Yeah, I've never even used that before. Could be good if you're going compound of the defender and dropping a bunch of village fortresses keeps across the map and you want to secure that and your opponents using men at arms to try to burn down. Mm. But that's why you go burning oil uh, mm-hmm. to deal with that. <laughs> so seems, That seems like a far better choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the name of the tech again? I'm like Slow burning defenses and it increases the fire armor of stone wall towers Keeps and outposts by plus 10. Okay. So I, I guess, guess torch I guess, damage doesn't become a problem as much. Yeah, I guess we know what Bill said. Yeah, I guess if you're going compound defender, it's pretty, you know. But also, it's free. So, like, pump it. Yeah. Like, might as well. Yeah, that's the thing yeah. about Delhi. Like, it's free. Yeah, just, might as well. Just throw the queue. Forget about it. It'll exactly. be done in five minutes. <laughs> make, just, just, make sure you, just make sure you queue that last. Don't have it, you know. Queue take it last. Your, like, <laughs> Yeah, don't don't have it like the old Ron Popeil set it and forget it. Uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like don't put it before village fortresses. We're like the best keep tech. You got you making sure you know you got that in front of it. Slow burning defenses is most definitely taking prioritization. Is that a real word? <laughs> Wait a minute, what did I just use there? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just said something crazy. Anyway, but yeah, make just make sure you're uh developing. I mean, you're researching these uh techs in the right order. Because yeah, I would most definitely like it's free. It's actually not, it don't even take that long either. So it must suck. <laughs> it must suck because it doesn't take long. <laughs> it's actually pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, coming out of the university, uh, oh, what is it? Oh. There's a tech that gives you uh, buildings additional HP. I don't use that that I mean, often. Um, that'd be good honestly, for like a wonder. That'd be a great one to go for. Oh, yeah. yeah. Should I be taking the mangonel? Uh, there's the Manganel tech out of the Siege Workshop that oh, decreases that setup time, but I even old, in games where I'm massing mangoes, I'm still rarely taking that. I feel like if you're massing person, mangoes, yeah. you would want that, I would think. I, I think that sounds good, but how much does it cost, though, is the big question. Mm, not much. It's pretty cheap. Um, I only know that because it's like every time I tab over to the Siege Workshop, it's still available still to available. research. Well, Everything else is not. Yeah, that's one of those texts I get and don't think about. I set up and forget about it. I think. Uh, I, I think I, I, it's a matter of like I wish we. I mean, at what point? Because I think some of these texts are viable if you have enough mangoes, right? Like if that if you have like 
three or four mangonels in the field. You might want that because then they can set up lightning fast, oh, yeah, shoot, yeah. get out of there before anyone even gets to them. But with like just one, no. maybe not. I think it's even bad. I think it's even bad. I think maybe it's just people just don't think about it. I think it's pretty good actually. Yeah. A uh, real quick, I'm looking at one right now that is not bad, but I feel like, and you can correct me. You guys are like you play a lot of English. You correct me. But I feel like I don't see, like, when the game first came out, this tech was used all the time with English. And now I never even research it or use it. And that setup camp, is that still a thing? People are I like, still use that. Rarely. Rarely. Like, I, one in a in 20 games. Yeah, I've never that. seen anybody actually, like, I think people just throw their archers to the wind. They just, like, don't want <laughs> I, if I If I'm going, I will. This is the tech I still do use. Um, I think it saved me a couple of archers. I don't know what's the cost on it again. I think my thing is the cost. Like if I don't have, if I'm floating extra gold and I don't have enough to build a extra archer, I will research this because you just have to remember to use it. If you use this tech, yeah. I think it's worth it. Um, and if you're going kind of for an all in Ram rush, it can be very, very viable. If especially if you need to pull back and regroup really quickly, uh, you can okay. save a couple of weak archers and keep that critical mass together. I won't say it's the greatest tech in the world, I wouldn't say it's the tr most trash tech either. I have used it to some degree. I know I've saved at least one or two units. Whether or not that justifies the cost is a whole other deal entirely. But it used to be the bee's knees. It used to be the bee's knees. Yeah, uh, it used to be big. Like, yeah, it used to be able to trigger it while you're in combat. And it was yeah, and that's the problem with it right now is you can't oh, do it in combat. Oh, I yeah, missed dude. that season. Yeah, dude, that was a little rough, man. He's, they're healing up as they're murdering you. It was nice. <laughs> uh, as an English guy, I kind of I kind of resent that looking at Delhi. No, there you <laughs> I mean, go. Delhi just got their nerve for healing up. So kind of the the cost of their uh, their scholars still, went down so though. It's still great. yeah, but the healing yeah, it's not healing as good is a little as it was. different. Now. Yeah, I think most of the the what do you call it the uh, blacksmith upgrades all feel pretty good. I mean, obviously iron undermesh yeah. and uh, the did level no, those work are, are much better. Yeah, yeah I feel like okay. still arrow yeah, iron undermesh obviously better. The ranged uh, upgrades better than the melee ones, but those melee ones I think sometimes you kind of they're still sleep good. I mean, it's. It's more of a priority. Like yeah. with, a, with a blacksmith, it's if I go into Imperial and it gets a little late into Imperial, uh, prioritizing finishing my blacksmith research is something that I do every single game. Sometimes I'll drop a second blacksmith are, to get it go faster. Those are must take. Uh, I mean, it depends. I, I'm an Ottoman player, so hmm. <laughs> that it's uh, not a. Uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah. It's so right. fun. Well, I, think I think we've talked a lot, a lot of good text. Now I gotta, I gotta ask, we've been talking about like the most underrated text. What do you guys think are, if you had to pick one tech, what is the single greatest tech in this game? Oof. Before the nerf network of Citadels is up there. It's still uh, up there. I think it's still up there. For cost point and uh, what it does. Um, I mean, oh, iron yeah. under mesh, I guess is, Wheelbarrow, iron undermesh. Old reliable oh, over there. there. Yeah. yeah. Like small, not huge game swingy things, but yeah. 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 everybody yeah. takes every single game. Yeah, wheelbarrow, iron undermesh. I got one. I got one. I think I think this might be my favorite. Obviously, I'm very biased towards the Abbasid. But that new tech fertile crescent is beautiful. Mm. It's mm. Like literally, the, the take the take literally is this: uh, you reduce the cost of all econo uh, economic buildings and houses by twenty five percent. Like That's everything huge. is cheaper. Everything is cheaper. Like like the TC is cheaper at all. Like it's I don't know how to like you know on water it's cheap. Like everything is cheaper. And like for the the uh, Abyssin, who you know obviously are known for their economic booming, you know, like it's almost like sometimes. I don't know whether what's more important. I really feel like, it, honestly, because I used to think fresh fruit stuff was my favorite. Like, obviously, I'm a, I love. I mean, that's still up there. That's, that's still, still, that's still, still pretty good. Yeah. Like yeah. it, but it be like it's still really good now. But before the season four patch, it was insane. Mm -hmm. it, it was literally, it was literally insane. Like, fit like half off all your villagers. That's why their economy <laughs> went. <laughs> Sorry, just, just think about <laughs> half off villagers. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that just terrified me. I thought someone was like, I'll say, yeah, what's going on? I was like, oh, I thought I was gonna storm. We're good though. Um, yeah, I really think that first hour crescent might be my number one. I really like, you know, I it may something might trump it, but right now, actually, too, I don't know. Uh, really quick, this is something kind of like just recently is not the best, but a really great tech that I really honestly took for granted. 
is uh the Rus tech, uh the the militia. Like mm-hmm. the the militia they get listen, that tech is a savior. I was playing a team game with people in the Discord and I was done. I was raided and it was my economy going crazy. It was pretty much done. I went to that Kremlin. I hit that militia tech. I don't know if it's even technically a tech. I don't know. But like in my listen, my literally they spawn these militia are like these little foot soldiers for uh, the roost and they spawn out your TC. My TC wasn't even, it was not existent. It was gone. He destroyed my TC. He's working them out. He's working on my next landmark. I clicked it. I spam clicked it. They spawned out of the earth. They spawned yeah. out of the ground and killed everything in his, killed everything he had. I was like, kill all the bombs, everything. Dude, that is, that's something that we do not, just let it build up. They go for that. If you're getting raided, and you're like on your last leg, just spam because I think they call they're not that expensive. And they also, they also um they scale automatically with each age. So literally you just spam it and they'll come out of the ground and get immediately to work. They don't got they don't need to come in. They get to work immediately. Yeah, I, I spam noticed, the, I I noticed look- in two V2s and I noticed in a couple of uh, other games I was watching that like going in trying to go all in on Roos, having the Kremlin's really nice to stop that. Oh, like, it's yeah, it's a lot more difficult thing. to all in on on the Kremlin. Yeah. It got a it got a boost, but yeah, those are mine. Those are mine too. All right, I think mine's probably could be. I like Royal Bloodlines a lot still. As the dying yeah, French yep. player, I still can be. I think that's still a top one. Network yeah. of Citadels is still massive. Oh, uh, yeah. Then of course the bread and butter ones that you guys mentioned are just the old old reliables. Yeah, it's hard. I feel boring for saying, yeah, Wheelbarrow's the best tech. It's yeah. true. I mean, I mean it's Undermesh. true. It's true. <laughs> Iron Undermesh is the best tech. Like the boring like. Yeah, one ranged armor. I mean, that's what that's, that's the how the path. Allies won yeah. the war, right? That's how the Allies won World War II. It wasn't the sexy <laughs> things, wasn't the cool tanks, the Panzers that the Germans yeah, had. It was, right. it was, <laughs> it was logistics. It was spying. Yeah, it was yeah, the basics, the information. It. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, hey, guys. Bill, you, you, you eat a lot of chain restaurants, don't you? I'm I eat a lot of <laughs> what. Yeah, <laughs> you, you eat a lot of chain restaurants. Basic stuff. Yeah. Bill's, Bill's favorite uh, restaurant is Applebee's. I <laughs> actually you eat you chain heard, Applebee's after this. You guys heard of Chili's? Yeah. <laughs> Too good. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Bill's like, I'll have the chicken and the potatoes, please. <laughs> chicken and fries and a burger and fries. Oh, my gosh. No, nothing, nothing's wrong with the burger. Nothing's wrong with meat and potatoes. Uh, no, right. sir. Preach. There you go. All right, guys. I think we'll take one quick little break, and then we'll come back with our extra sheet. Hi, Sockerton here again. Uh, I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs to some communities that you might be interested in if you haven't heard of them already. Though odds are pretty good that if you're listening to this show, it's because you've already heard about it from one of these channels. Nonetheless, at any rate, I just wanted to give a big shout out to the Griot Barra, first of all, which is an awesome Discord channel that was started by Sir Nevels, our very own Sir Nevels here. Uh, and it's just a great community to find other players at your skill level, find teammates to dive into team games with. Yeah, they also hold weekly jousts and other tourneys and just have lots of threads and discussions about the various civs and everything under the sun related to Age of Empires 4. So check them out if you haven't already. I also want to shout out the Rising Empires, which is a Discord and Twitch channel that hosts weekly tournaments. I've been involved casting some of the games and stuff with them. They're a great community. They work really hard to provide some quality content. They host the low ELO legends for players anywhere from bronze to diamond. And also the War Chief Club for those mighty players that are looking for something particularly challenging and way above my skill level. Uh, definitely check them out and get involved in the tournament. It's free, tons of fun, and a great way to learn and improve your skill in the game. If you've enjoyed the show so far and would like to become a supporter, uh, we're setting up a Patreon as well, which will hopefully have bonus content and other things coming down the pipe as the show you know grows and expands. We'll be adding more and more of that kind of stuff. I'm starting out with a modest goal of just $100 raised to cover up our initial startup costs and hosting for this web, uh, podcast. Uh, so hopefully any additional proceeds then could be used, of course, to expand our show and improve our content quality. You can find the link to that in the description. It's been awesome seeing the support from you guys. Our first episode gained over 200 downloads that I was able to see, and I was just particularly tickled, actually, by looking at my world map and just seeing how far spread out you listeners are. While the United States has the largest segment, I was astonished to see that it's not actually a majority. It just has the plurality of listeners. Um, So that means more listeners are outside the United States than in. 
uh, which is, I think, is kind of awesome. So shout outs to you guys listening in the UK, Australia, Germany, and Japan. You guys are the top listeners across the globe next to the United States. I think followed up by then Canada, uh, a couple of France, a couple of places as well that had a number of downloads. Um, and we've had some some notable places that kind of caught me by surprise too, like Tunisia, um, several downloads in Israel, a couple in Malaysia, India. Gosh, the list goes on and on and on. I could just waste all the time talking about it. But I see you guys out there. I appreciate you guys listening. Hope you're enjoying the content. And so thank you for the support. And if you want to ask us any questions that you'd like us to answer and discuss on the podcast, you can head over to my Discord channel called Socraton on Twitch, where I have a thread made specifically for questions. I'm thinking I'll probably end up making a Discord just for the podcast. Uh, But for now, that's where you can reach us. Again, this is only episode two. We're growing. We're learning. Uh, And we'd appreciate any kind of feedback you have. Or if you have any questions and topics you'd like us to discuss, let us know. We'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks again for listening, and now let's get back to the remainder of our show. And we're back. All right, time for our extra sheeps. This is what we do at the end of every single episode. Uh, we all each have our little tidbit, share our extra sheep. I went first last time. Maybe Beal, do you want to take it away with your extra sheep real quick? Sure. Uh, yeah. So my extra sheep, uh, things I learned this week, uh, I learned a lot this week, uh, cause I was over at rising empires casting their two V two tournament. And I certainly learned a lot, um, about two V two, but also just setting up like a professional style cast. It's one thing for me to like do my own streams and, be a co-caster on a professional stream. It's totally a different thing when I'm the one running the professional stream. Uh, There's a lot more pressure. There's a lot more uh, that you need to like lead a conversation as you're tabbing through all of the windows, keeping everything going, going through the brackets. So yeah, my extra sheep was that 2v2 tournament and casting that and learning a little bit how to put on a professional production um when i'm i'm normally just having more of a casual style stream yeah man when you make we make it big time man don't forget about me man you know what i'm saying yeah. just, <laughs> listen man just don't forget me man i'll be down hey, your discord oh. is Kind of the big time right now. Oh yeah, no kidding. That thing is done. I I remember when that thing just started, dude. I remember. I I, I don't even participate in it nearly as much as I should. But I remember when it was like brand new. It was a small little like thing, and man, it's. I was thinking. I remember when it wasn't Griobara. Yeah, I remember when it was something very different. I remember those days. You remember the original? Oh, the OGs know what it was originally called. (laughs) Oh man, I I love that little image of Link and his his wonderful glutes. Oh man, oh yeah, man, he was uh, doing some squats that week. Oh, that was so good. I remember those days. That's funny, but uh, yeah, Bill, man, you know, you're doing your thing out there, man. Well, Sir Neville's, what's your uh, extra sheep? I think I see you. I know that's all outline oh. what you're talking about. We're going to do a whole episode on this towards the end of the season, especially. But go ahead and give it your... your uh, oh, yeah, sheep. yeah. You know, me, my sheep is... I feel like it always... I try to, like, put, like, a little bit of a... A little bit of a tip spin on it. But uh, something I am now learning and overcoming. This is like... And I actually, you know, I have a little personal YouTube channel. I'm not trying to do a shameless plug. Just my name. Plug but, it um, in, plug it Do it all, do it all. Plug it in. Yeah, it's, listen, it's, it's nothing special. But it's Sir Neville's, you know what I'm saying? Give uh, a follow, guys. Come on, subscribe. Do it. Uh, I appreciate it. No, yeah, just, you know, sir, like, you know, the knight, you know, royalty, sir Neville's. Neville's, N-E-V-E-L-S. Yes, there we go. Yeah, on YouTube, sir Neville's. And uh, something that I always struggle with, and this goes back to even before, before Age Empire, getting, like, how to, and this is my advice on how it could not be, on it could be flawed, but the best way to get over ranked anxiety, I, that I, that's something that I, have just really honestly discovered this season is that the, my, something I learned, my little sheep is getting on ranked anxiety. You just got to play. You just got to play. Like, cause I realize a lot of players kind of like in the community, I hear them make multiple accounts because they don't want, they want to try new things out and try new civilizations. because They all play pretty unique, but they don't want to risk their rank because they are obviously be probably, you know, have a player, you know, disadvantage in their gameplay playing a new civilization. 
But then what I've been hearing is about actually, and I suffer from this too. You you make you make a secondary account to you know try out that new civilization, and then you start doing good on your second account. Now you don't want that account to get deranked. So now you're making like third account, and like and it's like a it's like a reoccurring thing where it like it gets layered eventually. So this season, all I did, I sat down, got me some warm milk. <laughs> took it, you know what I'm saying? Just, to just pre- like just relax, dude. It's a game. You're gonna lose. And I just start playing my main account. And I promise you, I've been enjoying the game that much more because now I feel like I'm working. So I'm working my main account. I'm working towards something. And now, and well, with all these various third party websites like AOE4 World, you can look at how you increase through the seasons. You know, like maybe season two, you were go two, season three, plat one, and maybe season four, now you're diamond. You see, like, oh, look, I'm actually getting better. And when you got so many different accounts, I'm not saying if you want to, you know, make a practice account or smurf account or whatever, I'm not going to, whoever does that, that's fine, more power to you. But playing a main account is great. So I would say my extra sheep is just play the game. Just play it. Just play it. If you want to try a new civilization out, and believe it or not, losing is actually more rewarding than winning. I promise you that you learn way more from your losses than your wins. Because me, when I first started this season off on my main account, I was sick to my stomach. I was silver one. I went, I lost all, almost all four of my play, all my place and matches I lost. But yeah, extra sheep is go out there and grind out that main account. Don't be afraid. Don't let the pressure of losing rank get to your head. And I'm going to conclude on that. Nice. All right. Well, my all extra right. sheep is, uh, well, my, my, mine's a bit different. Um, I was watching, I've been really thinking like the last two weeks, actually, I've been like thinking, where's my extra sheep going to be? Like, where is it? Where is it? I was scouting all around my map trying to find it. Uh, my extra sheep today is actually, I was watching, uh, Snoopa's stream. I was watching him stream and he was playing the game against GUA and they were on Boulder Bay. And this is probably the most interesting Boulder Bay game I had ever beheld. Uh, they were, I think, uh, it was I'm trying to think of the sibs. I think it was Mollians. Snoopa was playing Mollians going into, might've been Roos, might've been, no, no, it was Mongols. It was Mollians into Mongols and they're on Boulder Bay and they were in dark age for like almost eight and a half minutes both it was the longest dark age game i'd ever seen and they were using transport ships and i, and I know this was a mechanic but i'd never seen it used this like aggressively it was so the villagers were like being the civil defense force fighting and snoopa had, had all his villagers in his uh it was being a water map he had them all in a transport ship sent them over stopped any towering that was happening and like actually torched down gua's docks so he ended up having to go like three tcs into uh silver tree like trade network it was insane, but but winning the water obviously kind of propelled Snoopa to the to victory. But I my I was just so in awe at how you can play this game in Dark Age. And I someone was joking like, oh, we should do like a Dark Age only tournament. And there were some jokes that had to be the most boring thing in the world. But I was like, yeah, if it was this kind of boring, I'd watch it all day. But it was probably the most interesting Mongols game. Mongols would do pretty good in that <laughs> Dark yeah. Age tournament. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Mongols, maybe some uh, maybe some English with the the rush, the Dark Age Man at Arms rush. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was mm-hmm. my that was my thing is I've yeah. been looking at a lot more of Dark Age rushing and maybe like what oh, sims yeah. do that. I mean, English being a, a civ I play, I don't Dark Age rush often. I don't do a lot of Dark Age shenanigans. I th- I just feel like it's yeah. bad mannered a little bit in some ways. Uh, but I mean it's a viable it's strat. Nice. It's it's not nice, but it's viable. I mean it's you're you're literally <laughs> trying to crush your opponent, so nothing's really that's nice. No but that's my extra cheap because I thought it was the most amazing transport ship battle i had ever seen so shout out to, uh, to snoopa and gua nice. for putting on a quite the show i really enjoyed that one that's sweet and that brings us i think to the end of our episode it's almost two hours we we're doubling the length of our last episode oh, as well. man. a big it's shout fun. out to all you guys who have listened this far who are all across the world it's been really fun watching everyone download hopefully we can get this podcast to be bigger uh we are setting up uh, i am setting up a patreon to see if you guys want to help you know support support us doing this. It does cost some money to uh, run this thing and to get it posted everywhere so you guys can download and view it. I'll have more information like that in the description. Uh, But until then, this has been The Extra Sheep. Beautiful. Yeah, have a good night. See y'all. Have a fine day.